Hello and welcome to Build Up To A Good Game. Um, West Ham United take on Brentford in just over one hour away with lineups. Just over time this way, Gonzo, how are you feeling? Yeah, looking forward to this, mate. It seems to be the same for every game at the moment. Just really looking forward to it. We don't seem to be approaching any of these with any sort of trepidation at all. It's just nice to be able to enjoy your football. What about yourself? Um, I'm actually quite nervous. Um, it's the first game this season, actually, that I feel a little bit of uncertainty. I'm not as confident as I usually am. Against Leeds, I was confident we were going to win. Newcastle, even... You know, Vienna on Thursday, I was confident we were going to win. But today, I just don't have that momentum inside of me. I think it's more credit to Brentford than anything against West Ham. I've probably seen more of Brentford than anyone else in Premier League bar our own team, for whatever reason. I think they're just always on the telly, uh, Brentford. They've had some big games and stuff. But I'm just being very impressed. I've been very impressed with Brentford because when a lot of teams come up to... The Premier League, you go from the best team in the league to the worst team in the league, in theory. Not always the case. The Eats United are an exception. You could argue that Brentford themselves are an exception. But I think most teams go from being the best to the worst. So the question is, what are you going to do to stay up? And you sometimes see teams be a bit of a shadow of themselves, play a bit more defensive. Through them last year, prime example, Scott Parker trying to buy a whole new squad and didn't really know his best partnership. He worked out happy through the season, but by then it was far too late. Brentford's come up and he's tweaked the formation a little bit. He's going to three at the back. But they're still playing the same philosophy. They're still taking the game to other teams. And I like it. But as a West Ham fan today, it scares me a little bit because Tony and Bueno up front have impressed me a lot. A lot. And um, I've got a feeling they're going to create a couple of big chances today. I really do think Brentford will create a couple of big chances against us. And the question is, can we create big chances? And I've been impressed by Brentford's defence as well. Um, so I don't know, Gons. I'm probably just convincing myself to be nervous, but I am a little bit nervous um, prior to this one. Yeah, look, I, Brentford have been on the telly, uh, deservedly so, because they have been a, an absolute breath of fresh air. And I think it's quite important for football. I, this is what I said when Leicester went on to win the league. I said it's actually quite important for football that Leicester win the league. And I think it's quite important that Brentford do do well, not today, obviously, but it's it's sort of crucial that that model of building the club organically from the bottom upwards can get you to where you want to go, can get you to the promised land, in essence. Particularly bearing in mind they have they've had to sell their best players along the way, but just that whole ethos of of being able to sell them, replace you get the impression, and look, we've been a a million miles away from this for a long, long time. We're hoping that the club is now moving towards this sort of thing. They didn't sell Rico Henry, but you get the impression that had they have sold Rico Henry, not only did they, they already know the next left back or ne next left wing back that they're going to get. They already know. They probably know the next three. They've been scouted. It's all been done. All the hard work's there. And there's a real structure. And it's not even a philosophy. It's, it's, it's so far past the philosophy it is just the way they operate i think it's in incredibly good what you need to stay up is a goal scorer i think norwich thought they had a goal scorer in pookie didn't quite work out although he started very well what you're going to need is actually somebody who's going to score 12 goals during the season i think and if you can do that then you're going to be uh, in with a real chance and they just play excellent football and, and good luck to them. And I don't think they'll take the dip that some of the others do either. I think they'll, yeah, I think they'll I, finish top 15. I do. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think when I worked for retail, but very first job in retail, my manager saying was to create an environment where success is inevitable. I think Redford have almost created something like that. They've created an environment where the next transfer is successful, if you like. And, and I admire that as a stats man. I like to see a team using data to be successful because it almost gives proof in what I believe in, if that makes sense. Um, so next time someone says, stats mean nothing, I can go, well, have a look at Brentford, actually, mate. They use stats and look where they are. Um, anyway, you ready for the West Ham lineup? Yes, please. Right, uh, no surprises. No surprises, perhaps. Lucas Fabianski in goal. Sifal is fit for the game, at least fit to start, and he keeps his place at right back. Kurt Zuma partners of Bona in the centre of defence with Alan Creswell left back. Declan Rice partners Suchek in centre midfield while Mikhail Antonio is the lone striker with an attacking trio with Saeed Ben Ramo, Pablo Fanals, and Jared Bowen in behind him. It sort of picks itself these days, Gonzo. Well, absolutely. The only one we didn't 
we didn't really know was the goalkeeper. We've got our answer there. That's absolutely fine. I said in, in the breakfast show this morning, if if the margins are so slim that you don't really know which goalkeeper should be in there, then that's that's great. And I think the commu- for mu- communication reasons, as I said in the preview, this might not be a bad thing to do. It's just one less component to change in a defence. I, I think Ariola probably will work his way in. Um, but at the moment, it's hard to get into that first team. And that's a good thing, because I'll tell you what, if it's easy to get in that first team, it means we're crap. So, um, you know, long long may it continue. And this is going to give... I'm pleased about this. Look, we've heaped a lot of praise upon Brentford, and rightly so, and will continue to do so. However, what's the manager's name? Franks? Is that his name? Franks? Thomas Frank. Um, listening to him yesterday, I got... Not worried. I, I, didn't, I didn't worry... I just thought I'd heard it all before. Now, a lot of the stuff that they do and the way they run the club is really refreshing. It it really is. But he started, not only had I heard it before, I'd actually heard it last week. And it's the Kevin Keegan school of of tactics in that that respect, which is we'll concentrate what we do and it doesn't matter what the opposition do. And that's all well and good. But I do feel you've got to, at some point, whilst it's important to have confidence in yourself, you do have to make some provision for the opposition. And I think, well, that's all well and good, mate, you going out and playing out how you're going to play. But I'll tell you what, if Antonio's in top form and Fornells and Ben Rama are getting close to him, if you've not made provision for it, if you've not drilled your centre-backs in a way that's going to be out of Mark Antonio at the game, you're going to find it very, very difficult. Um, so I do, I do think, I don't think it's going to be an easy game. I think it's going to be a tough game. But his comments on that one, that he will not make any special provision. I thought, well, hold on, you know, it, Antonio may well be, and I understand you might have one or two um, differences of opinion, but Antonio is in the conversation for the most effective striker in the Premier League at the moment. And if you have not done anything in your tactics to, to counter him, then it may well not turn out very, very well for you. So I, I, maybe it's a bit of kidology, but you get the impression, like Bielsa, it's just, this is how we play. You know, you you deal with us. So it's going to be really interesting. I don't blame him, to be fair. After he's seen you say stick three past Liverpool, I think I'd be saying the same. I'd say, I know, we're going to continue playing that way. You know, we're going to stick three past one of those titles favourites, um, we'll, we'll do alright for the rest of the season kind of thing. I get what you're saying. I actually think their defence I think this might actually be one of Antonio's toughest oppositions yet on paper with Janssen. Well, I haven't seen the Brentford team yet, but I assume Janssen's in there and um, Ayer's in there. I don't know who the third centre-back could be. Pinnock was an injury doubt. He might be fit. But they're all big physical defenders. Antonio is going to have to rely on his pace a bit more today than what he would normally do because often we see him school and bully other centre backs. I think Brentford's defence might be okay with him to some extent. But as for our team, I think it picks ourselves now. I'm pleased to see Sufal's fit enough, although I think it was obvious. I think Moyes has played this trick a few times. I'd like to see Moyes do the opposite now in press conferences and just come out and say, Yeah, he's fit. And I'd like to see him do it when he, for a player when he's not fit. So Sufal was missing. I like to see him come out and say, oh, yeah, Sufal's sure. fit. He'll be starting right. And then he's not. So managers are like, oh, he's tricked me there. I'd like him to have... He's almost got one trick now in the media, Moyes, which is pretend a player's injured when he's not really injured. Um, that is big news. Um, that is big news. But, um, so yeah, Sufal's fit. The rest of the team picks itself. Vlasic can't get in there. And that, like I said in the review of the last game, this is a credit to the boys that are in the park. A £27 million signing can't get into our starting eleven. Uh, the bench for West Ham, um, Ryan Fredericks is missing, but also so is Mark Noble. Let's take a look at the West Ham bench now. We've got Ariola, Yarmolenko, Masuaku, Dawson, Vlasic, Kral, Johnson, Lanzini, and Diop. Still a really strong bench, Gonzo. I and mean, Mark Noble, the obvious player missing there. Yeah, well, let's be fair. We're in massive trouble if we need Mark Noble to come on in this game. Um, that we, I'd imagine we're in. Uh, I don't know. I'll say we're in massive trouble. We're, we're either in massive trouble or we're five nil up. So I'm not. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to be a, a massive miss for today. We've got um, other options there to come and play in the middle. If you want someone to play central midfield to open the opposition up, then I'd suggest Lanzini is a better option than Noble anyway. If you want someone to sit in front of the back four, then I would suggest Crow is a better option just just for that particular job than Mark Noble. So I think that's that's fine. Fredericks uh, a bit annoying actually for him because I do feel. You know, it's, we were sort of one knock away from um, from needing him. 
But as you rightly say, Johnson um, is in good form, playing well, can cover both positions. So I don't feel it's massively weakened the bench. No, I think no one might know on the bench. At least it means that in the United minute, if we get a pen, Moyes have got an easy decision to make, which is no substitution. Do not do any subs. Yeah. Um, I think it's a bit of a blessing in disguise to some extent. And that is, if there is an injury to Suchek or Rice, he's got to do something else. It might be bring on Corral. It might be bring on Lanzini, change it a little bit. Because I think it's almost easy to say, oh, Mark, when you come, you can, you can go on and, and fill it in. I'd like to see us... Moyes forced into something a little bit different, and that does that on the bench. And to some extent, if he was fit or Frederick was fit, there's a chance Ben Johnson would have been on the bench, which would have been extremely harsh after his really good performance on Thursday. So it's still a really strong bench, really, really good. The fact is we're missing Fredericks and Noble, and our bench is still that good. We haven't had to call on the youngsters. It's good. It's good news for West Ham. Right, Brentford, ready to take a look at their team? Mm. Um, uh, Rhea starts in goal as always with a back three. They're sticking with their same formation. Yes, they are sticking with the same formation of a three-five-two here. Uh, back three of Pinnock, Janssen, and Jorgensen. Uh, full back, wing backs of Henry on the left and Canos over on the right with a midfield three of Janel, Norgard, and Baptiste, and a front two of Ivan Tony and Embo Emo as well. So a very strong team for Brentford Gonzo. Yeah, and Abuemo frightens the hell out of me. Every time I've seen him play, I think he's sensational. And this is, I mean, I know he plays in a slightly different position. And, and when I've seen him, he's been perhaps more on the right than, than the left where you traditionally see Ben Rama um, pop up. That being said, you know, that they, they have got this ability to lose Watkins and bring in Tony, to lose Ben Rama, bring in Abuemo. You know, it's... It's Neil Mopai of... as well. Mopai left and they brought yeah, in yes, Watkins yeah. and then Watkins yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's amazing uh, what they do. Rico Henry, I mean, I think we took a good uh, look at him. You can't keep buying players off Brentford, though. Brent, they're not, it's not a cheap place to shop. It's not Lidl or Aldi going to Brentford. You know, there's only so us football clubs have only got so many 30 millions for these players, haven't we? So you can't go, <laughs> you know, you want to go and buy Watkins, Henry and Ben Rama. You know, you're going to need 90 million. So, um, yeah, we looked at uh, Henry and, and he's obviously a very, very good player as well, Gio. They've got a really good team. Um, Aya, as you mentioned, is um, is missing for today as Ryan Ryan popped up there. So look, I mean, they've got some internationals in the team there. You know, this is this is no they're no mugs at all. And obviously, Ivan Tony looks Premier League ready. You know, he, he's a really good forward. This is going to be it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough game. But I said this about Leeds. It'll be a yeah. tough game for whoever plays them. Yeah, Ayers. A huge loss. I'm actually a bit more confident now. My nerves have sort of settled a little bit seeing Ayer out there because um, Jorgensen, I haven't seen much of Jorgensen, but he can't be as good as Ayer, simple as that, because Ayer, I think, is probably one of the best signings of the season, to be honest with you. I think come May, when, we, when you look back at Penny League as a whole, signing of the season, everyone will be looking at Lukaku and Ronaldo automatically. And one or two players like Ayer and Cucurella at Brighton, I think they might go a little bit unnoticed, actually. I think he's a superb signing for them there. I think Janssen's always been one of the best centre-backs in the Championship. Um, but still, they've still got two of the, the back three there. I think they're strong down the sides, but more Henry. I think Canos is good going forward. can be a little bit erratic out of position, if you like, a lot. But Ivan Tony's impressed me a lot. I used to be a bit, I don't mind confessing, Gonzo, where I liked him. I was a bit unsure. I was a bit, yeah. oh, I don't know, but I want to spend £30 million on Tony. And you watch him on the Championship, and so, I wouldn't call him a tap-in merchant. That's really disrespectful. But that's sometimes... When you watch the highlights of Champions, mean, that's all you're fair. You're only fair goals of him knocking it in. You think, well, you, you might not get that. You won't get that space in the Premier League. I have to say, I've been extremely impressed by him. Not his goals. Has he scored yet, Tony? Yes. How many has he's got? Just I the think, one. I think he's got, I think he got two. I think he might one have two, two goals and two assists. I might be wrong. I but think that's the case. His, his play, his all round play, him in the air up against defenders from just inside the opposition's half. Is unbelievable. I think he's probably been the most effective player in the air this season, just going by what I've seen. And the way Emblem runs off him as well, that's why I'm a bit nervous. Those runs, those long passes to Tony, they'll cause us trouble today because Zuma's good in the air, but Bonner's good in the air. But so is Ivan Tony. He looked good against Van Dyke. You know, Van Dyke's one of the best centre backs yeah. in the air as well. And he was bossing him at one point. The finish against Liverpool was superb, albeit it was offside and got disallowed. That doesn't matter. He had a defender there, he took it down, finished it really well. Um, they're going to cause us trouble. I fear these more than they did Leeds United anyway. But 
I are missing big plus. The centre midfields are a weak part, I think, for Brentford. Mm. Um, they're they're okay. Jan Elt, Norgard, and Baptiste they're okay, but they're not quite convincing me that they're worthy of a top ten penalty team yet. Uh, the Brentford bench, uh, right here we go. We've got uh, Bitstrop, Wissa, Gods, uh, Onyeka, Good, Force, Fernandez, Jensen, and Rasmussen. Don't know who he is. He's a defender, apparently. 22-year-old defender, Rasmussen. Never heard of him. I'll give him that one. Uh, but Wissa, he's the one that I thought might start today, Gonzo. He scored a couple of goals for Brentford. He was the one that came off the bench against Liverpool and scored the third goal, and it was a lovely finish. He's probably a bit too attacking, actually, um, because he can't really play centre midfield. And he's not good enough to knock one of the front two out of the team. So he's stuck in this lurch where it's like, We've had a few players, I'm at West Ham, where I've said to you, but we don't have a... Masuaku at the minute, we don't have a position for him. It's a like I, him. Are you? Are you? Yeah. They don't have a position for him. He's an attacking midfielder, but they don't play with attacking midfielders. You can mm. only really come on when they need a goal. Um, it's a bit harsh. He deserves to start, but this game is too risky for him to start. Anyway, you feeling feeling good? You've seen the... Um, seen the line uh, of yeah, yeah, look... Yes, I, I'm I'm exactly the same as I was. I, I do think it's going to be a tough game. I thought Leeds was going to be a tough game. Uh, that being said, I do feel we we have the antidote for their poison, so to speak. I, I I just I think West Ham. We've come so far. We're a really good team. We really are. But I think sometimes when the onus is on us to break the teams down, um, that you can't argue with a form. We we've done well. But I just feel when teams come on to us and we soak it up a bit and then we can almost give them confidence by letting them attack. And then we spring the, the counter-attack really quickly and they have Antonio, Ben Rama and Bowen really fast. That we've often four nails will try and play that early ball through as well. I think it's a hell of... I don't care how good your defenders are. I think it's a really, really tough tactic to... Um, to deal with, which leaves you with the other option, which is then what, what you're going to do. Well, sit back and deny the space at the back. That means you're not going to attack very much. You're probably not going to have that much possession. They're just not going to be prepared to do that. Both play, teams like Leeds and Brentford, their ethos uh, is, is so set in stone. They're not going to change the way they play for West Ham. As you say, you understand it. I understand it. Um, that being said, I don't wish to compare us to Liverpool particularly. Um, but I'm going to. I think if there's any club or any manager that David Moyes has probably looked at in recent years and thought, actually, that's the way I want to play, I think it's Liverpool. I really do. I think we're, we're nothing like Man City. I think we, we are more like them in the way we will we'll get down the pitch in not very many passes at all. Not saying we're long ball. We're, we're not. We can play some good football. Um, and they obviously handled Liverpool very, very well. So um, the only thing I would possibly say is we are a little bit more robust than Liverpool. We're a little bit naughtier. We're a little bit, um, probably got a little bit more physical strength overall throughout the team. So um, it's going to be really interesting, mate. Yeah, I think it's going to be a really good game. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, I do, I do still have some nerves. I think they're going to cause us trouble because they will come and attack us. They will press high. They will have a really high tempo to the game. They seem to never really slow it down. And their football is just as, if not as energetic as Leeds United. Yeah, they don't get the credit for it, Brentford. Um, and I think if there's going to be a game that the Europa League or the League Cup midweek bites us on the arse, it might be today, actually. I, I know Suchet didn't play the whole game, Finals didn't play the whole game and stuff, but Rice played the whole 90 minutes, Antonio played an hour kind of thing. And I just do wonder if, come the, the end of today's game, that we are maybe flagging a little bit. Um, that worries me a little bit. I think this is the day that we might see the impact because it's not just the Europe. Thursday night's Europa League game. It's Thursday night's Europa League game. Leeds' game, the Man United game, the, um, the game over in Zagreb and all the other games. It's, it's having, I don't know, however many games we've bloody had, six games in three weeks or something. It's that all today that I feel might just catch up with us a little bit because majority of the players playing today have played the majority of the minutes in those games, whereas Brentford have obviously had a gap in between each game. And they, they look good. Brentford do look good. They're coming here feeling confident. And they've got nothing to fear. The pressure's on West Ham today. We're expected to win. We're the favourites at the Brookies. Everyone will be expecting us to get three points. And a, a, a draw 
it's a good result for Brentford today. It is a good result. To come to London Stadium as a promoted side and get a point is a fantastic result. And that's the, the stage that West Ham are at now. We're up there where it's, you're expected to beat the promoted sides. You are that good now. You're almost seen as one of the top six status, if you like. Well, you have to beat these teams. It's yeah. just your bread and butter games. You need six points against Brentford. You need six points against Watford and Norwich City as well. So the pressure's on us. And I think that actually might help them. It should be a bloody good game. I'm really looking forward to it, actually. Um, what, do you fancy putting a bet together? I do. I definitely do. Right. What are you fancying? Well, I think Antonio's going to score again. I really do. I think it's, yeah, for, for all the reasons I said. What I'm happy with that. I like yeah. it. Same odds as Tony. There's the same odds to score, which, with the greatest of respect to Ivan Tony, I, I feel that's a bit silly because Antonio's a but the most important strike of the week here. 11 yeah, to 8 is a really good price for him to score, I think. Um, what else are you fancying? Um, I think there will be lots of corners in this one. I think that's a safe one. I, I don't think there's going to be many cards, Joe, in this one, I don't think. Um, give me a number for corners. Over 8 or 9? Yeah, over 9, because it makes 10 corners. Yeah. All right. And West Ham going to win? Yes. And you fancy goals as well? I fancy goals. Let's yeah, put over two and a half goals in because obviously yeah. for us to win, we need to mm. score at least mm. two, and I think they'll get one. So, um, over two and a half goals. Still only seven to one. To be fair, we're going to need someone to get booked. I'm afraid, or another goal scorer in there. Four nails. Uh, for the goal of the card. Five goal. For it to score. That's your odds booster. There you go. Oh, oh wait, hang on. Get that out of there. Um, I'm just getting back. Oh. 25 to 1. We'll take that. We'll take that. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, well, just ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls can't enter this. It's, uh, it's gambling. It's an 18 plus thing. Ladies and gentlemen only. Um, if this bet wins, we will give someone £130. I will read out the bet in a second. Gonzo will then give you a phrase. All you have to do to enter is put Gonzo's phrase in the live chat and you will be entered into the, the the draw should the bet win. So we need West Ham United to win the game. Antonio and Fernandes to score a goal. Um, three goals in the match. So as well as Antonio and Fernandes, we need someone else to score. It can be for either team. And 10 corners or more in the match for both teams combined. £5 on, £130 back, £130 to one of you to enter. Put in the live chat the following phrase. I cannot believe it. We, I cannot believe it. C-A-N-O-S, if you wish to... Um, if you wish to know, that's Brentford's right wing back. I cannot believe it. Get into the live chat and you will be entered. Right, so happy days. Let me just click on Mark. That's it. That's what we want to see. Get that in the live chat and you are entered. While you're here, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel around here. Where's the key ba- Where's the key men? I mean, you've got to look at Saeed Ben Rama, haven't you? Up against his former club. Um, I've seen a paper today, I've seen the headline, I didn't read the article, must confess, but uh, it was about Antonio and Ben Rama, and Ben Rama saying he's found his soulmate on the football pitch, being Mikhail Antonio, you can see it when they play football, to be fair, and um, one of the former Brentford players, I wish I could remember his name now, saying that Ben Rama's the best player he's ever played with as well, so they're very much putting the pressure on side Ben Rama ahead of today's game. Yeah, I, I little penny for... Um... Uh, for Pablo Fornells' thoughts on that when he hears that um, there's a special kinship and relationship between Antonio and uh, Ben Rama. I wonder if he feels like a jilted lover because uh, he's probably thinking, well, hold on, it was you and me that had the special relationship? What's going on here? Um, however, I loved what Ben Rama said there. Ben Rama said that he'd been studying footage of Antonio to work out where he was going to make the runs and what he was going to do. And having studied that footage, he's now finds Antonio more predictable, which now means he can tailor his game. So he now expects to get the ball back. I really liked what he said there, actually. Um, no surprise. I think I look, there are leaders, Gio, there are leaders like Declan Rice or, you know, like Mark Noble or whatever, um, who are very vocal and, then there are, there's a different kind of leadership or there's a unifying factor to it. And the more I hear about Antonio, 
about how he involves his teammates, now he involves his squad mates, and how he speaks to them and phones them up for a game of FIFA or this, that, and the other, and the whole learning Spanish ring of four nails. And now we hear he's making this extra effort with Ben Rama. The more I hear about that, the more I think, well, this is this is just as important as any captaincy to have somebody in your club who is who is warm and welcoming and friendly to anybody else that comes in and you don't always need a leader, someone to scream at you. Sometimes you need a best buddy as well. And if Antonio's fulfilling that role, it just helps everyone settle. I think it's absolutely amazing. If you are spending time with each other outside of the um, outside of the game, then you're going to get on each other's wavelength anyway. It might be a wavelength in terms of your sense of humour or, or your hobbies or whatever else you do. But that can only help in terms of gelling as, a, as an attacking force. I'm really, really pleased to hear it, actually. And um, yeah, absolutely. that's why it's important to scout for personality before you bring people in. I was really pleased with what I heard with Ben Rama say about Brentford. Um, there's a stock load of answers that you get when people return back to their old club and stuff like that. I didn't feel that Ben Rama was saying that. I felt that Ben Rama had a genuine affection for Brentford and was genuinely appreciative of the manager and what the club did. And I thought, you know what, fair enough, because if he's a nice guy in that way, it sounds the reason he's going to be a nice guy with us. So, yeah, I think we're really, really lucky with some of the characters we've got in the squad at think, the moment. I mean, you said you know Ben Rama's been studying the future of Antonio. Do you think that's a say Ben Rama thing or do you think that's a David Moyes thing? I asked that. In the, I said that in the breakfast this morning, mate. Um, I uh, I've not watched it. Either most of these people. So what did you say? I'm just saying. I, 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 why did you watch it? What are you doing? Well, you're not watching. I'm traveling back from Scotland chat from since five. I've been in the car since five a.m. Well, so back you, to yeah. Does your phone? Oh, oh, sorry. They don't have phones that work in the car in Scotland, do they? Of course. Sorry, mate. I was going to. Um, to be fair, isn't it? No, yeah. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I did wonder. I did wonder whether it had been Moyes saying, you know, look at these takes of Antonio and work out his movement um, or whether he'd done it off his own back. And I sort of come to the conclusion, actually, I don't mind and I don't care in, in many respects because either one is good um, because if Moyes has done it and then he's going to be pleased that Ben Rama's followed his instructions and it's worked. Whereas, obviously, if Ben Rama's done it, then David Moyes is going to think, wow, this, this is great. You know, this guy's doing this. The equivalent of extra homework that you've not been asked to do, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I think it's great, really. Um, Fish Cash, thank you for the, thank the, you. the three dollars there. Um, Gans has said, Is everybody's worried about a huge offer for Ice of Bone? But if Antonio gets a golden boot, who's to say a huge offer doesn't come in for him? Um, right, everybody in the live chat, get your thoughts in in the live chat. It could be about the West Ham team, the Brentford team, how you see the game going, not just score predictions. We'll do that in a couple of minutes. But get your thoughts in, get your comments in, myself and Gonzo. We'll get a click in, we'll get them on the screen. We'll have a little look at them. We might even discuss them. Depends how good your comment is. Um, Chris says that um, he was asked this question at work. So, Fowl, would you replace him with any other right back in the league? Not necessarily is he the best. I answered I wouldn't replace him for anyone. He's not put a foot wrong. There's there's more technical right backs in the league. But as, as we keep saying every week, football's not just about kicking a ball, crossing the ball, whatever. You know, personality, character, determination, um, application of tactics play a huge part. I think when you put all of those together, we, we, we've got a leader down there. We've got a real driving force. And it's not just you take, it's not like you're taking one player out of the equation. Look at how often he links with Suchek. They've got an understanding there. We've basically imported an understanding from a national team and from a club team and put it straight into our club. So I think if you lose Suchek, you lose a lot more than just, just the player. Yeah, I, I think there's better, as Gonzo said, there's better right backs. Rhys James is, is a better right back, for example. I think there's one or two players that might go on to become better right backs. Tariq Lamptey, Livermore, and Southampton at the minute. Both young players that look like they could really reach the top of the game in the Premier League. But with the suit West Ham, not necessarily. We don't swap them for anyone. Probably not. But you've got to take some context into that, which is money and value. It's a straight swap for Kyle Walker. Well, no, it won't be, will there? It'll be a 30 million fee. In a, 150 grand a week for him. So we don't want Kyle Walker at West Ham. Well, if he was on the wages to Valley, absolutely. But we don't want him for 35, 40 million on 150 grand. No, because it's not good value for West Ham. Sue Fowl is probably the best value for West Ham that we can get. And he's been the best right back possibly I've ever seen at West Ham, to be honest with you. Um, you know, you might look at Ben Johnson, uh, not Ben Johnson, Glenn Johnson, short stint there. Lucas Neal, I thought was really good. Shemmel had his one season. In terms of consistency, I think Sufal's definitely um, up there with that. Um, 
Ben Ray says, so far this season, he's happy. He thinks Vlasic will come good. Crowds will class and we will only get better. Um, keep your comments coming in. I'm trying to keep an eye on There was one about Suchek. I wanted to pick him. Click on uh, that one. Was it Suchek needed to score? Was it that comment? This one. Uh, uh, I think Suchek's going to regain some form today. I think uh, there's still some, someone. I've, I've always said I don't get people that put out these, that hypothetical question. Who would you like to see score? Well, I'd always like to see the striker score. I think it's important. But do you know if there was a who would you like to see have a good game today? I think Suchet would probably be my answer here. Um, because the rest of them are all in form. I think he's probably the one at the minute that's flagging, if you like. He's not playing bad, he's just not playing good. Careful. Um he's not playing good, is he? No, he's I, doing I, okay. I, uh, um no. What I will say about about that is, um, so I got told off last week for not giving him a ten. A 10. Um, I think what well, I think the thing is, if he scores, you go on a run. I think that's what you get with him. You wouldn't be surprised if Suchek scores a goal, then he scores four out of the next seven games or something like that. That wouldn't be a surprise at all. He's, he's got it in him, and um, and, and I definitely felt that there was possibly it was Leeds. Some it happened at half time. Yeah, I, I thought you're a completely different player. I don't know. I wonder because his application is is my little theory on it, and what do I know, it's just a guess. But hey ho, look, we've got time to kill. Um, I, I've got this little theory that because his application is he works so hard, because he does the extra training, because he's a leader, because David Moyes has got this mantra: don't run, don't play, and then Suchek constantly posts these stats like he runs him and four hours run more than anyone else. I think David Moyes doesn't tell him off. I, I I get the impression he doesn't have to be. There's other people in the squad that he tells off more than Thomas Suchek. And I just wonder, my little theory, if that was the first time he got a proper rollicking at half-time from David Moyes. If David Moyes said at half-time, that is not good enough. Well, what I've seen in the first half is not good enough. You really need to disrupt your game. And I just wonder if, if that played a part. Complete guess, but he was completely different in the second half. I've got three. I've got three reasons. Uh, first one has been mentioned in the chat by quite a few people. Colin Wood was the first one I saw. Says that um, Suchek and Rice, Rice being one bombing in the box. I think that's had an impact on Suchek. I think Rice's role has definitely changed. It's more box box. Rice is almost demanding that. And when your best player demands something, you've almost you've got to listen to it. If, every now and then goes to Solskjaer and says, "I want more crosses, please." So I'm sure I have to listen, dude. You're almost like, oh, sure. all right, okay, I've got something here. So when Declan Rice says to Moyes, I want to be a bit more box box. I think I can offer more in the final third. Moyes would be foolish to say, no, you won't. Shut up. Stick, well, stick with what you're doing, please. Thank you very much. And we've almost, we're in this situation where we're almost not going to pander to Rice's needs, but we do have to keep him happy. And if altering his role to play them the role he wants to play, I think that has. Second reason, I think he's tired. I think he just looks tired. I think... Um, but I think it's acceptable to be tired given that he's played last season and he's every minute bar 30 seconds at Craven Cottage. Then he went straight to the Euros. Then he's come straight back. We've heard time and time again that on a day off, he's in the training ground doing stuff. He literally doesn't have a day off, this man. It's going to catch up at yeah. some point. And the third reason is when last Monday night, Monday night, Crystal Palace were playing by Tim and they were talking about how Crystal Palace's style of play has completely changed under Vieira, how under Roy Hodgson Palace didn't have the ball. And they were saying that Brighton's got a lot better with the ball. So they brought up this stat in the corner that says, look, the team with the more possession this season compared to last. Number one, Crystal Palace. Number three, Brighton. Number two, West Ham United. We had 7% more possession so far this season than last season. And I think that's massive when it comes to Suchet because I think he's not that good on the ball. I think he's okay on the ball. But he's not a ball player. He's not like Fernal, Lanzini, Declan Rice, even Martin Noble. He's, his strength is not dribbling past players or doing quick one-twos and stuff. He's very safe, safe on the ball. And that's okay. I I, I could be wrong. I can't remember any time Suchek's done a lovely through ball to someone or that. If he's got an assist, it's probably with his head. And that's okay. There's a role for that. But I think this is where, when our style of play changes and we have more possession at West Ham... I think Suchek possibly struggles a little bit because, I don't know, I think he prefers the balls in the box in the air kind of thing. And I think we've just adapted a little bit and I think that's impacted Suchek to some extent. Not exposed his weakness, but 
Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's, oh, it's... I agree. I think it's a valid point, mate. A valid point. I think when we have, I've often found last season, and luckily the good thing about doing these videos is they are archived. Is uh, and when you get things wrong, people tell you, "Well, when you get things right, me and Goals will remember." Don't you worry about that. But I, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll remind yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, we'll, just in case you forgot, we'll we'll tell you. Um, but one thing I felt last season was when we came up against teams like Burnley, that I felt that Suchek struggled because we had the ball in possession. It's like, well, we need someone to break down the defense. And I don't, I don't think that game suited Suchek. When he's running around chasing the ball and he's barging players off the ball, he's winning headers. He's fantastic at it. Get it on the deck, knock it about. I think he struggles a little bit. And I think that's what we're seeing this season. We're seeing more of the ball for West Ham. Um, anyway, before myself and Gonzo disappear, we don't go anywhere. Charlie's coming up with the watch along. Charlie will be here all the way through to final whistle. Get your score predictions in the live chat, please. Let's get some up on the screen. Gonzo, while I'm clicking on some random score predictions. May I have your final words, please, as well as your final score prediction? A big game for us today. I'd like us to start quickly. I would imagine we won't. I've got a feeling that they're going to start sharper and quicker than us. Um, but I do feel that fitness plays a part, and I think we are really, really fit and strong at the moment. I think David Moyes has been resting the play as well, been rotating his squad well. I think I... I don't be surprised to see a big game from Bowen today, actually. Um, I know he had a rest in the week as well. Uh, but I do wonder how often some of these players are training at the moment. I'd be surprised if some of them are not training at all. So, um, I think that's going to play a part in it. I expect Brentford to play really well. I think they'll be a constant threat, particularly um, uh, the, the front two. Uh, that being said, that being said, we Brentford are not going to suddenly become... Um, you know, the AC Milan of 1980s or whatever and shut up. So they're going to find it hard to stop us from scoring. I think it'll be a high scoring game. I think they may score. And bearing in mind the bet we've just put together, there's only really a, only one scoreline I can give. And that's West Ham United 3, uh, Brentford 1. All right, Gonzo, you can do some clicking on score predictions now, please, if you can work it, old man. Gonzo struggles a little bit with the old uh, clicking thing. Um, I... I the live chart predicting goals. A lot of confidence there with West Ham winning. A few sitting with the draw as well. I don't fire. I don't know if I'm squeaking my chair or something. Anyway, um, I, I think there is going to be a lot of goals. I'm still not confident. I've still got my nerves in me because I do think M. Bueno and Tony is going to cause us massive issues. They play really closely up front together for Brentford these days. I mean, Tony wins a lot in the air. M. Bueno is running off it. I think defensively, minus uh, Jorgensen, I'm not too sure about him, but certainly Janssen. Janssen will relish the physical battle with Antonio. I'd like to see Antonio try and make this a game of pace rather than physique, because I think Janssen will be okay with the whole battling thing, if you like. I think Pinnock's quite good as well. He's three big, tall boys at the back for Brentford. Um, but saying that, We've got quality. We've got four. All our front players are in form. I think Antonio will be on the score sheet again today. We've got our first choice 11 out there on paper anyway. That's David Moyes' first choice 11. We've got the options on the bench. That's one advantage we do have to Brentford, I have to say. Our bench compared to Brentford's is much, much stronger. Should this be a draw on the hour mark or something? That's definitely not my wallet. Jesus, that thing doesn't get taken out. Never mind open or anything. Bloody hell. Um I'm going to say West Ham 2, Brentford 2. It's been a while. Oh, it's been really? a while. Two, I'm going to go for 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I'm going to go for 2-2 two, two in this one. I will be buzzing if we win. I, I, I will because I just... I'm scared. I'm a bit scared, actually. But anyway, you happy with the live chat going? Are you managing all right there? <laughs> It's so it patronising. Of course, I, oh, I, oh, you know, I don't know how to work it. Um, no, I, I'm fine. I think I managed okay. Okay. Right, myself and Guns are going to disappear, but before we do, can you drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and don't go anywhere, because coming right up is Mr. Charlie Walsh. Thank you, Gio. Thank you, Gonzo. Gonzo, I hope you managed. I hope you, I hope you did it, Gonzo. I hope you did it. Uh, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Stuart Morris Countenance, of course, uh, for helping us bring this stream and make it a reality. They are amazing accountants. They're based in Ilford. A West Ham fan hooked us up. That's why they help us. That's why they help us. 
So definitely go check them out if you need your personal finance, you need your business finance, they're your people to do it. Stuart Morris Accountants, ladies and gentlemen, they are the people. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Hello. I'm in heaven, it looks like, due to the white balance. This is going to be a fun day because it's sunny. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all good. We'll start off with a quick question. Early doors, bang, we're getting straight in there on a scale of one to ten. Going off of the conversations you and Gonzo were just having, one being the least confident possible, 10 being the most confident possible. How confident are you in a West Ham result? A West Ham result. Let me know how you're feeling. Uh, we're going in that with the early doors. Let me do a couple of clicks over here. It me. Yes. Hello, Ray. You're right. <laughs> Myself and Ray, of course. This is something else to say. It's the beginning of the month, people, which means patreon.com forward slash hamstrack. something you should definitely check out. Link in the Link in the description below. Just have a little gander, have a little peruse. Lots of things on offer there, extra videos, including a show myself and Ray host over there called Two Spanners, One Hammer, which I would love you to be a guest on. Let me know if you become a patron. I would love you to come on. Otherwise, just have a gander, have a look. Lots of extra stuff, lots of audio versions done by Rebecca. There's lots of good stuff going on there. Lots of good stuff going on there. But Ray, I hope you're good. I'll see you for tomorrow's episode with Peach, which will be about 5 p.m. UK time. Let's have a look at some of these numbers, shall we? I'll start from the bottom and work my way up. Um, what we're saying, 7.5678887. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Jay, is that old school Jay? Jazza. I assume, oh, just because it's a different color Jay, my, my brain's like, this must be a different person. But Jay, if it is you, good to see you. If not, Jazza, good to see you as well. Um, also, I'm true. Uh, <laughs> nine, Nake, uh, Nake, Nake Red. Is that, I can't remember. Knackered. Knackered. That's what it was. Not Nake Red. I'm an idiot. I just remembered. I apologize. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Seven, seven, uh, six, five, five. Ooh, eight, eight, six, seven, seven, seven. Hi again. Good to see you, Dave. Eight, seven, six, seven, seven. Afternoon. Good to see you, Arthur. Hope you're well. Seven, ten from Chris Topolando. Six, five, four. Ooh, wobblies, wobblies. Nine, eight. Chris, good to see you. Uh, I cannot believe it was, of course, the phrase. Good to see that. Uh, <laughs> have you got a new one every time, Scott? I swear you do. And it's always incorrect because, you know, I'm this just not. But hello. I hope you're well. hope you're all good. hope you're fine. Sai's here. Good to see you, Sai. So it's, it's a mixture. We've got quite a bit of confidence in the chat here. But we also have some, some defo, some defo knackered. I know I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I know I'm an idiot. Um, We've got a lot of confidence here, but we also have just a little bit of a little bit of a a little bit of concern. And I can respect that because I understand it fully. I understand it holistically. Now, if you're if you if you're new around here, uh, I would like to say welcome because the live the live chat, the watch along is here every single game. I'm here every single game, non-stop, from half an hour before kickoff all the way through until just after full time. Uh first half, half time, full time, the whole thing. Always here, having a good time with you lot in the live chat. So if you're new around here, like the video, subscribe, make sure to come back for the watch ones because really, honestly, the live chat is what makes this happen. This makes this happen. It's not me. It's just you lot because otherwise it would just be me by myself and that no one wants that. Um, so make sure to come back, get involved every single game. It's good times. And then of course, at full time, Gio and Gonzo will be back with their live review just after that, which I will spam the link in the chat so you don't even have to go anywhere. It's all just right in front of you. It's all just right in front of you. So uh, what's the thing I need to do is the lineups, the lineups, ladies and gentlemen. Now I haven't set this up, so I'm going to click the button and hope it just works. And if it doesn't, well, we're in trouble, but I'm going to click it. Hang on. Oh, okay. It's not perfectly lined up, but it works. It works. West Ham lineup as such. Fabianski in goal. Kufal, Zuma, Ogbonna, Cresswell, Rice, Suchek in the double pivot. Fornells, Ben Rama, Bowen, Mikhail, Antonio. We know this by now. We understand it. We love it. That is the lineup. It's the most predictable lineup you can possibly have. Uh, with a subs bench of Ariola, Johnson, Dawson, Diop, Masuaku, Kral, Lanzini, Yarmolenko, and. Blasic. That is West Ham's lineup. Highly predictable. Highly predictable. Not a bad thing at all, to be fair. I'm very excited to see that lineup. I think this is the right lineup to go with. We could have changed the three at the back or done something like that. But for me, this was the way forward. 
this was the way forward. Brentford, however, line up as such. Um, Raya and goal. They've uh, had to change out Ayer at centre-back, which means they have Zanka, Janssen and Pinnock. Uh, Canos and Henry will be playing the wing-back roles. Henry on the left, Canos on the right. Baptiste, Nordgaard and Janelt being the central midfielders. Embuemo and Tony up front together. Incredible. A very, a very dangerous front two. I can't stress. It's scary. It's scary. It's scary. Uh, and then the bench. Uh, Fernandez, good. Janssen, Force, Wissa, who scored uh, the other week. Uh, Godos, Onyeka, who I quite like. Um, Bidstrup and Rorslev. Rorslev. So there you go. There is, those are the lineups. Just in case you're wondering, just in case you're, you're thinking you joined late, you didn't see the lineup section of the show. There you go. We'll go through it once more just before the end as well. But I'll ask you now, we're 20 minutes before kickoff. Where aren't you coming to us from? I'm coming from a, a surprisingly sunny London today. A surprisingly sunny London. It's been very rainy. So the fact it's just sunny now is kind of wild. But where are you watching from? Let's see where the people are vibing. Um, I should also say, hey, if you are looking, if you're looking, if you're looking for a stream, if you're looking for a stream, because of course it's not on Sky today, it's also not on BT. Link in the description below. There's a thing called Discord. Click it, join it. It's free. Lovely community over there for you to get involved with and talk about stuff with. But specifically, if you're looking for a link, there's a section called StreamYards on the left, stream links on the left hand side. Click on that. You should find what you're looking for. You should find what you're looking for. Good afternoon, Mike. How are you, sir? I hope you're all good. I hope you're all good. Up, uh, well, not, not here. It's about to. Docs, you or me, but I'll just say not here. <laughs> but hope you're well, my bro. Hope you're well, my bro. Um, how much has our bench improved? Very true, Dave. Very true. Our bench is significantly better at the moment. Significantly better. Um, Kiri, you reckon? You reckon he's, he's got a more intense look? Let's let's just let me let me just deep this again. See. Oh, I walk. Okay, Kufal's not yet. Yeah, okay, Kufal's not really got an intensity about him. You know, we've got a sort of but is this too intense? I would, I would, it's more bored to me. It's more a bit like, you know what I mean? It's more bored. Whereas Sue fowl has got a bit of the, you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't know if that's intense. I don't know if that's intensity. It's not not intensity. It, it looks a bit more bored. But I do. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. <laughs> Where are we saying Nathan's coming from Dubai? Is it sunny there? I would guess yes. Hope you. Hope you. Hope you're feeling cool, Nathan. Um, although it's getting slightly later in the day, I guess, so it might be cooling down. Uh, Perth, West Australia, you love to see it. Good to see you, Hammers Down Under, and everyone from Australia. I've seen you all in the chat earlier on. Big plays. Big, big plays. Uh, Spain. Alan's out in Spain. Alan is out in Spain. Um, I don't know what that means. Is that a place? Either way, good to see you, Bogey. Hope you're well. Good to see you, Bogey. Hope you're well. Um, knackered. No, the first time, that time. Uh, Perth, West Australia, Spain, Greenville, North Carolina, US of motherfucking A. Yes, Jeffrey. Good to see you. Sunny Chadwell Heath. It's quite sunny today, isn't it? Comparatively. Comparatively. It's been very rainy a bit, but today we've got sun. Today we've got sun. Hence my looking like I'm in heaven all the time. I'm watching from bed. Listen, I respect it. I would be in my bed if I could. Uh, unfortunately, the internet does not stretch that far. Um, true, there may not be a link there. There should be one, Harry. There should be links available because it's obviously being shown everywhere else around the world. But it is not on Sky or BT Sports, unfortunately, in the UK. Um, Wolverhampton, as per usual. Good to see you, Alex. Andy, south of France. Ooh, nice for some. Nice for some, Andy. Barcel Barcelona, says Dave Ben. Love that. I will always say it like that. It's just, it's just natural. And now, now Russell T Davis is coming back. I have to now. It's law. It's law. I need to shave, don't I? It's big. Fine city of Norwich. Coming from a place short of beer, just out of the shower. Panic is on. Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck, Jordan. Uh, Melbourne, Australia. Rural South Australia. They see the Aussies coming through. Big players, or at least the Aussie people who live there. As opposed to the amount of people. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Devon, wet and miserable head bridge. Uh, Hebden Bridge, West Yorkshire. Shout out Halifax. Let's go, boys. Let's go. It's just outside of Halifax. I'm aware, but you know what I mean. Uh, Brexitania. Is that... So that's probably like somewhere in Essex, really. If you're judging by voting intentions. Uh, and Collingwood, not sure what the sun is about. I was able to get petrol. My PS5 arrives at West Ham. With Jesus Christ. What a day you're having. What a day you're having. Big plays there. Big plays. 
Uh, very jealous, very jealous. Also, enjoy the PS5. Good times, good time. Come on. Get involved, get involved. Get involved, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Uh, Auckland, New Zealand, love that. Pakistan, says Phil Jones. Phil, I'm sure you're somewhere different every week. I don't remember, though. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, what else are we saying? Apart from having to do the watch long, is there a reason you don't go to any games, Charlie, says Callum. Um, there's a couple. So just before the pandemic here, I gave up my season ticket. Um, and I didn't want to give the club any more money while GSB were running it because I feel like that's the only language they understand and I am very GSB out. So I was like, if the only, it's the only, it's the only way forward is to, if they only understand money, then the only way I can sort of make my voice heard is by not giving them money anymore. And I understand that's kind of a pointless gesture because everyone else will, but you know, it is what it is. I'm trying. So that's kind of why. Um, and then since the pandemic hit, obviously we start doing watch alongs and so just not going to any games um, really. Really to be nice. And also because the people I live with, it's like shielding is the thing. And so it's just safer as well at that point. Um, but at some point I'm planning to sort of, the, the idea is to go to like the boats and stuff before games and say hello to everyone and then bop out when like an hour and a half or whatever, how long, however long it would take me to get back home to do the watch along. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's, that's future talk, future talk, future talk. Um, Nashville, love that. Around the corner from Turnpike Lane Tube. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful tube station. The double stairs down. I always talk about that, but I just, I just like it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Kufel's not in battle mode. No, he's not. He's in. He's in very happy mode. But you know, a happy Kufel is a good Kufel. That's the way I describe it. Um, I hope you've even got an accent now, Mike, and a whip. <laughs> Watching from Sweden. Yeah, it's been raining for a week. Able to watch all Peon Europa League games though, uh, with somewhat expensive streaming service they have over here. Nice. Yeah, I mean, we have to pay for like four different services, and then we even don't get all of them. <laughs> it's very annoying. It's very annoying. Um, which is why you click on, click on the link below Discord. Go and have a look in there. Blah 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 blah. Um, but nice Sweden. It, it's, yeah, it's really raining over here. To be fair, uh, we are red hot. Uh, we are red hot at the moment. Ability and confidence. We very much are. Small quaint town. East London, Romford. Oh, lovely stuff. Um, last time I was in Romford, me and Gio went to a pub next to the train station. The one that you come down the ramp and then it's right in front of you. And we watched, I think, Arsenal versus Spurs. Um, just didn't mention there. Watching in Tenby, supporting Brentford. Peter, welcome, welcome. Hope you are. How do you feel about the game, Peter? Out of 10, confidence wise, about Brentford winning. Let me know. Axminster, menacing smile from Kufa. You'll have to see it. That's even in smile. Come on, <laughs> Apologize. I apologize. It's probably a terrifying prospect. Um, probably a terrifying prospect. Rushing home again, as per usual, Alan. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best. So we are 13 minutes, 12 minutes away from kickoff, ladies and gentlemen. It's a big game. It's a big game. If you were to pick, here's a question I'm interested in. If you were to pick one player from Brentford that wasn't Ivan Tony. Because I feel like Ivan Tony's the obvious example because we need a striker to take at West Ham. Who would you take? Equally, if you're a Brentford fan, if you were to pick one player from West Ham, who would you take? Who would you take? Uh, my chair is hella squeaky. It's just squeaks over here. It's just I don't know how loud that was. I apologize if it was very loud, but it's just squeak town over here. Squeak town. I think we're gonna be. I think we're gonna do well today. I've got a lot of confidence, you know. I got a lot of confidence. In in usually I'm I'm sort of pretty calm when it comes to Premier League games. The Europa League games are the ones I've been apparently just terrified for, absolutely terrified for of late. But when it comes to Premier League games, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty calm. I'm pretty laid back, right? And this one's an exciting game for me. I have a soft spot for Brentford. I can't lie. I enjoy the way they play football. I enjoy the way they run the club. Everything about them. I just you know I just vibe it. I just vibe it. And so to be honest with you. I'm I'm excited for this one. I'm excited for this one. When it comes to the actual result in terms of West Ham, I'm also relatively confident. You know, you you guys hitting sixes and well, mostly sevens and eights. Um, I would probably say a seven as well. I think it's going to be almost a replica of the Leeds game in a lot of ways. You know, Brentford play pretty similarly to Leeds. You know, you're talking about high pressing. You're talking about pushing. You're talking about gunning for it. And to be honest with you, that kind of suits us. That kind of suits us. It allows us to step back and hit the counter. It allows us to step back and just play the balls over the top. Just lovely stuff. Get get 
near Cal Antonio in behind. He's going to be very effective today. Their three at the back system is a little bit different in that sense. It allows them a little bit more defensive cover. It allows Rico Henry to get forward. It allows um, Canos to get forward. But ultimately, to be honest with you, it doesn't, to me, I'm just, I'm still relatively confident. As much as they've been really good, and they have been, and as much as they're going to come at us, and and, and that's something we dealt with sort of iffily in Leeds in the first half, and that's something that should be said, is if Brentford were able to essentially recreate what Leeds did in the first half in the uh, previous game, then honestly, it would not surprise me at all uh, if we went a goal down. Unlike in Leeds, who haven't got the form right now, Brentford do. So it wouldn't surprise me if we go a goal down. But when it comes to confidence, I am pretty confident. I am pretty confident and I'm having, I'm, I'm, I'm we'll get to score predictions, but I'll, I'd go for a West Ham win. I'd go for a West Ham win. Let's have a look at some of these people. Pinnock, I like Pinnock a lot. I was shocked by Pinnock. I didn't know Pinnock could, I didn't, I was concerned he wouldn't be able to step up. I thought, is he going to be able to step up into the Premier League, right? Because he's come, he went in from League One to Brentford and I was shocked. It didn't really make much sense. It was an older centre-back, well, not older, but not as, not the sort of age range you, you come to expect from Brentford to an extent. And to buy someone from League One, I was like, really? But it's worked out for him. It's worked out for him and he's doing very well. So Pinnock is a good shot. I like Pinnock. Um, Jorgensen, fair enough. Fair enough. I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, or Asia, however you want to say it. Um, the left back, Henry. I this is the thing. I like, I like Rico Henry a lot going forward, especially. I think he's not very good defensively. And I think this three at the back system really does suit him. He is, I, it's like Masawaku Mark II in that sense for me. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing at all, especially if you have a better defense around him to protect him. Uh, then I don't think it's bad. I quite like Rico Henry a lot, to be honest. That sounds like, it sounds like a lot of negative I've just said there, but I don't mean it that way. I don't mean it that way. None of them. We are all better. That's a bold play, Webb Gibbs, and I like it. Not even a squad player. Just no, not having it. Not having it. Ben Rama, oh, wait. I mean, look, it went well. Um, Neo Nitro says you take Bowen. That's a good shout, to be fair. That's a good shout, to be fair. Bowen and Bueno Tony. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, and Bueno and Tony. Uh, sorry, Bueno and Bowen when they're both playing on the same side, but still, oof. Oof. Bueno. Fair. Fair, Bueno. Um, let's have a look. What else are we saying? And Bueno, I want Ben Rama back. Fair, Bob. I respect it. I would take Tim Cahill. Yo, listen, James, if we have Tim Cahill here, I'll be very happy. I can't lie to you. Not because of the football. I just love Tim Cahill. I grew up watching Tim Cahill scored unnecessary amounts of headers. Do you know what I mean? Get Tim Cahill back. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, bueno, I take Henry because we need a left back or Aya because quality. Uh, I'll take Henry if pitch to choose. Fair enough, Kieran. I, I respect that. I respect that. And Bueno, I'm watching from Mexico. Gaming. Hi. Welcome from Mexico. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Mexico. Um, Brentford's back with transfer team. Probably the correct shout, actually, if we now we're thinking about it. <laughs> Jordan, it's probably the correct shout is uh, the structure they have at the club. It would be beautiful. I would choose. I, I don't play for either team. Although I would suit Cam. No, so I wouldn't suit Brentford. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a clown, do you know what I mean? So it's probably a West Ham thing. I'd take up that Ben Rama role. Not much running from me, though. I'm um, watching from Sunny Suffolk, young man. Alf, good to see you. Hope you're well. Hope Suffolk is uh, hope Suffolk's treating you well. Iron and Henry. I, uh, there's a lot of Iron and Henry chats. And a lot of Iron and Henry people talk. you got to respect it. you got to respect it. I'm just trying to ban people. Sorry, I apologise. There we go. Right, so... Rico Henry got a soft spot for Brentford too. Yeah, same, same. I went, I went there as a lot as a kid, but also they just, they just run so well. I just, yeah, I respect it. You know, um, I'd go for Brentford scout team. Yeah, uh, a bit better in defence and leads. Uh, I see your point though for sure. Yeah, I, a bit, but they are conceding. But a bit, that is true. Look, they're just better than Leeds overall. You know, right now, Leeds, Leeds are one way or the other. Uh, their best performance this season was probably against us, and it didn't work out for them. They're in a they're in a tough spot. When Leeds are very good, they're very very good, um, and you'd suspect they would be Brentford if they were very very good. But it's just not happening. Um, somehow I have this on screen twice. I don't know how that's possible. There we go. I don't even know how it's managed to do that. So let's now, seeing as we're seeing as we're six minutes away from kickoff, we might as well just get straight to it, shall we? Score predictions, people. Score predictions. Like I said, I am pretty. Uh, if you're going to talk total crap, are Tim Cahill, then have a dislike. <laughs> Komodo. It's a lot of. I, I don't know what I said wrong here. I th it was it. Or did I say anything disrespectful to Tim Cahill? And you're a particularly big Tim Cahill fan. Did I say anything too pro Tim Cahill? And you just don't like Tim Cahill? Whichever I did, Komodo. Whichever I did. 
Chill out. Uh, yeah, let's get these score predictions in. I am very confident, to be honest. Um, not very confident. I am certainly confident, though. Um, I feel like we've got we've got it going on right now. We are the team in form. Brentford are in form as well. Don't get me wrong, but I, we are a better side. Um, it's gonna be. It's not gonna be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. It's gonna be a tough old time. As, as I said in the preview, I think we'll say two things at the end of it. I think we'll say one that uh, Brentford pushed us to the limit and worked really hard and maybe perhaps didn't 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 they they certainly weren't bad by any stretch of the but two that we deserve the win and it will get the win. that's what i think we'll say at the end of it i'm going to say 2-1 to west ham that's the score prediction i'm going with and while you all get in the rest matthew what is the team sir i can show you the team is no oh, that's who scored that's who scored the team is west ham lineup with uh, the predictable. Fabianski, sing it along with me. Kufal, Zuma, Ogbonna, Cresswell, Rice, Suchek, Fornals, Ben Rama, Bowen, Antonio, with a bench of Ariola, Johnson, Dawson, Diop, Maswak, and Crow, Lanzini, Young, Lenko, Flasic. And Brentford line up with Rare in goal, Zanka, Janssen, and Pinnock at centre back. Canos and Henry as the wing backs, one on the right, one on the left. Henry at left back, obviously. Baptiste, Nord, uh, Nordgaard, and Janelt at centre mid. And then Buemo and Tony up front. Fernandez, Goods. Uh, Janssen, Fors, Wisser, Godos, Onyeka, Bidstrup, and Roslev as their backups on the bench. As their backups on the bench. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, 2 1. Watford in talks with you. Ranieri, Watford, man. They just. They just. They just didn't, they're zero chill, that team. 2 1, 2 2, 3 1. Um. Uh, two one five one bloody hell, Edward. The big bold plays one one. Hopefully, not mm. uh, two nil, two nil, two one. West Ham by the odd goal. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, West Ham one nil, two nil. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The chat is skipping all over the place. Me, there we go. Uh, three one. Benny Antonio for to score two one. Uh, imagine getting, imagine getting that bubble by Tim K. Or talk. Hey, listen, listen. People on the internet, man. That's what they do. Uh, any any win for West Ham would be great, but I'll go for two two. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, three two. Uh, what are we saying down here? Uh, three, two, three, two, two, one, two, four, Bob. Big plays for Brentford there. Big, big plays for Brentford. Um, uh, two, two, three, nil, two, one, Brentford. Let's go, beast. Fair play, Shai, Shai. Fair play, Shai, Shai. Three, two. There's a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. There's less draws than I thought there would be. I'm not going to lie. First of all, thank you very much to George for the 197, my friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hope you're well. Hope you're good. Uh, I'm sure Joe Gonzo will appreciate it as well. So we are a just a couple of minutes away from kickoff. If you are looking for a stream, because of course, of course, as I said, it's not Sky Sports, it's not on BT. Link in the description below for Discord. There's a section called Stream Links. If you click on there, you should find what you're looking for. If you were here just for the good build-up of the game and you're off to watch it, thank you very much for coming. Enjoy yourselves. Hopefully a good time. Hey, if you want some half-time uh, West Ham-based, basically just, just fan-based, uh, tactic well, not tactic analysis just analysis in general and come back at half time we'll be live here at half time and then of course at full time remember Jim and gonzo will be live with their full time review live on this very channel i'll be able to put the link in the chat and then you'll be able to to go off and watch it but thank you very much for coming remember we are live every single match day with watch along i appreciate you like subscribe all of that good stuff thank you very much we're just a minute and a half away from kickoff where did I see the link from Maxwell's below? Pow, Discord, link in the description below. You click on that, you join that. It's completely 100% free. There's lovely people there to talk to if you need to. But if you just want a link, there's a bit called Stream Links. You click on there. You should find what you're looking for. Arsenal Fan Circle, good to see you. I hope you're well, my friend. West Ham to win 2-1. I would take that. I would take that. And to be honest with you, I would take any West Ham one. Because there is, there is some trepidation going into this. There is some trepidation going into this, but I would... I would take it. Ranieri's favorite to take over Watford. Just what are they? They're just wild. Anyway, it's just not. I, bro. So we, because of the fuel shortage, we've been having trouble getting groceries as well. Um, and so I don't even, I don't have any orange juice at all. No orange juice at all. It's an absolute, it's an absolute pain. It's an absolute pain in the dairy air. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? Why did I say that? So I, of course, have the, the I, of course, have the timer. There we go. I, of course, have the timer up so you'll know exactly when I'm at because I will be slightly behind you, most likely. Um, 
seeing as you know again no no uh oh because his pictures like this um because i have no there's no sky or no bt so it's a bit of a pain in the ass we'll see what it is um delboy asks where my scottish mate is um he comes up he'll come back at half time if you, if, listen if you're looking for it he'll be back at half time uh what are we saying no citrus no citrus at all bro i've been reduced to water i've had to go to burger king um no i've been reduced to war it's an absolute nightmare can't can't fully absorb the citrus to let it go. Pavel Wolf, let's go Brentford. Like it, shout out to all the Brentford fans in the chat, by the way. If you don't know, we do this stuff all the time. Come back, subscribe, all that good stuff, Brentford people. Um, and hey, have fun, enjoy yourselves. Um, obviously, obviously, all fans of all teams are welcome. Um, people who people as long as you're not causing trouble, I don't really care. Um <laughs> Delboy, you're asking questions there that's going to split the audience, but the answer is no. Um, hello, all late arrival. Steve, see, good to see you, my friend, and Charlie, we trust as always. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. Hope you're well, bro. Hope you're well. Hope you're good. Hope you're all good. Is the fuel short? It's generally bad or media beat. Uh, so here's the thing, right? I don't know because I obviously don't drive. I live in London and I tend to try and walk everywhere I can anyway, even when it's several hours away because I'm an idiot, right? But it does seem genuinely bad, mainly because mainly because food, right, the food grocery delivery hasn't come, it didn't come twice in a row because of it. So it feels pretty bad. But again, I I, I can't really say because I don't drive, but everyone who, everyone who I speak to who does drive is complaining about it. So, you know, who knows? Stan Smith, hi Charlie, I'm back for this match. Love the content. I predict 2-0 West Ham. My scores are Ben Rama and Antonio coming your eyes. Thank you very much for coming back, Stan Smith. I appreciate you. Hope you're all good, bro. Hope you're all good. I'm back for um two 0 win. Okay, big plays, big plays. Ben Rama and Antonio. I think that's I think that's a safe bet as well. I like that. I like that. I like the confidence. I like the confidence. You know what fish doing it, bruv. Listen, it happens. It happens. It happens. But, you know, I'll take it. Um, I live. I like in East London, but I, li I live in East London, but I like Brentford, sorry. I've taken my heart. Shy, shy. Listen, that's totally okay. That's 100% okay. We're getting a minute's applause for Roger Hunt, by the way. Um, shout out. I say shout out. I feel slightly disrespectful, but you know what I mean. Um, who passed away this week um, before we get the game underway. That's where I'm at on my screen, just in case you're wondering. That's where I'm at on my screen. It's weird seeing the London Stadium full again, but I'm here for it. I need to go. See, I say I don't want to go to games, and then, then I see it, and I'm like, maybe I do want to go to games. Maybe I do want to go to games. Um, It's bad because of the media and news. I think that's probably slightly fair. Like, I think that's slightly fair to an extent. I think it, it's bad because of the situation at hand, because, you know, don't have the drivers, the lorry drivers, to make it work. But then, obviously, the media report on it, and then everyone panics. And then it's just a cycle that continues. Um, it's it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, CW, I'm blowing my London trip money by buying a new truck. Ooh. Listen, I respect it, mate. I respect it. Is it. Does it mean that that we wouldn't, you know, we're not hanging out or whatever? Yeah, of course. But it's big truck. Big truck techers. Big truck movements. Let's block that. Uh, the match is about to kick off on my screen. They've taken a knee. We are emanating live from the London Stadium. It's West Ham versus Brentford. And it is underway. West Ham to kick off. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, you eyes. And all that good stuff. Big plays, big plays, big plays. Um, Lewis, if you're looking for a stream of the game, my friend, look in the Discord below. Click there. There's a bit called Stream Links. Every single game, we have a stream in there for you. Have a gander. Completely free to join. It's, it's completely free to join. Uh... Have you seen the Watford fans on Twitter? This stand is a hired at Arsenal. I don't know any. I haven't seen any. The only Watford fan I follow on Twitter, amazingly, is the guy who runs Football Manager, <laughs> Miles Jacobson. He's the only Miles Jacobson. He's the only person I follow who's a Watford fan on Twitter. So I don't. I don't think I've ever encountered Watford fans on Twitter. But then again, I don't. I tend to stay away from football Twitter nowadays. I tend to stay away from football, football Twitter nowadays. Um, PSG have lost today. Champs League game versus City. Take him out of them. Hopefully West Ham not knackered after Thursday night. I mean, that's always the concern, Gordon, is that we don't have the uh, we don't have the fitness for it. It is very difficult to play so many games. PSG losing in the league is just wild in general at any point. But um, yeah, it's always a concern. But we seem to be dealing with it pretty well, and we're rotating pretty well as well. You look at it, and this team is 
the first team, you know, what we played in, what we played in the, uh, we played in the week wasn't. I mean, we're, we're rotating pretty well. We're rotating pretty well. Um, Sush OK is asking what channel is it on? It is not on live in the UK um, and in America. I think, I don't remember who it's on. I assume it's on um, Peacock or whatever. Um, but yeah. Link in the description below, Lewis. Click on it. It says join our Discord. Click on that. That's what we're looking for. That's what you're looking for, my friend. That's what you're looking for. Played in from a corner from Brentford. Hit early doors twice. Off the bar from Brentford. Jesus Christ from Umbuemo. Brentford had an early corner from the left-hand side there. Whipped it in. But Brentford looking dangerous early doors. The corner wasn't that great, though. Came out an initial hit from Rico Henry. Just deflects off one of the West Ham defenders who have, who have packed in that area. And then Embuemo, I think it was Rico Henry, I might be wrong. And then Embuemo tries to bend in from just outside the area on his first time, on his left foot. Hits the, hits the top side of the bar, goes out as a West Ham goal kick, but flipping heck was it close. Is it on Peacock in the US? I assume, but I'm not actually sure, Jeffrey. You'd, you'd be able to tell me. My brain says it's on Peacock, but I may be completely wrong with that. Maybe completely wrong with that. Um... PSG uh, lose because they have an unbalanced team. Their reserve team should walk the league. You'd suspect so. You'd suspect so. And they are very unbalanced. But when you have the opportunity to have Neymar and Bappe Messi, you sort of sort of have to take it. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Uh, my prediction is 2-1 to West Ham. I'm pretty... I, I'm feeling relatively confident. I'm feeling relatively confident. I think it'll be a difficult game. Don't get me wrong. But I do feel confident that we have what it takes to, to come for it. Hayden. Hayden, sorry, is saying 3-1 uh, West Ham. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, Brentford getting forward well again here. It wasn't Rico Henry who took a shot. I'm not sure it was because Henry's number three and the person who took it. Header wide. Oh, fudging heck. Flipping heck. And Buemo two times in the opening three minutes has uh, almost scored there. Henry getting forward. No challenge from anyone. Kufal just standing there watching him, letting him go, not getting anywhere close to him. And it's whipped in. And, and we're lucky that... To be honest with you, we're lucky that ball ends up on the head of Mbwemo and not Tony. Because you feel like if that was Tony, my God, would it be a goal? Remember, if you're looking for a stream, link in the description below. Discord, join that. There's a bit called Stream Links. And you can go and find what you're looking for in there. Um, because, of course, it's not on Sky or BT. Um, so I can't say that I'm watching using one of the links in that Stream Link section. But let me tell you that I know they work for certain. <laughs> let me tell you that I know they work for certain. Uh, ignore the spam in the chat, by the way. I'm fighting it back as best I can. Find it back as best I can. So on Yekka starting, by the way, that was something someone said in the chat that I missed. But uh, I think it was Yano who got injured in the warm up, which means Yano, uh, which means Onyeka takes his place in the central midfield area. I quite like Onyeka, to be fair. So I don't think it's I don't think it's fully happened for him yet at Brentford, but he's in the early stages of his Brentford career. But I think that's a good signing. I think that'll work out well in the long term for him. I do think, you know. Is it too early for sub predictions? Jeff, it's an excellent shout. Let's go straight for it. Sub bingo, ladies and gentlemen, is the game where we decide what minute David Moyes will make his first substitution. Um what minute he'll make his first substitution. There's the subs bench. If you want to, if you want to say who you think it will be for, I'll go 69 minutes as per usual. And I think it will be. You don't have to do the person, by the way. You can just do the minute if you want. You can just do the person if you want. But I think it'll be 69 minutes, and I'm saying it will be. I think it will be Blas Vlasic for Ben Rama. That's my guess. Michael Antonio has got forward here for the first time. West Ham steaming forward. Steaming forward. Clipped across. Hit off the post. I think offside was called there. I think offside was called, but it was close by West Ham getting forward. That's the first time we've really got forward in the game. Opening five minutes has been basically all Brentford, but an amazing ball with the outside of the boot there from someone. I don't know who. I think it was Ben Rama. Or four nows, maybe it's four nows actually. Okay, it wasn't offside. Antonio just stumbled off the pitch, but it was a good run by Antonio down the left hand side. The ball to find him, I think, from four nows was absolutely, was, oh, it was beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful outside of the boot, steaming through, uh, and then it ends up hitting the post. But Antonio had run it just out of play, so it didn't quite happen. Kevin will settle in any kind of win. I respect that. I do respect that. I sort of agree with you. I sort of agree with you. I said it's not, not going to lie. Uh, I said West Ham was a team not to mess with. Nobody wants to listen to me. Stephen, listen, the more we do it, the more people will listen. I'll tell you that much. Um, do these guys have anything better to do in spam chat? No, not really. 
Uh, I think you can reduce the damage of spam with slow mode for 10 seconds. It's not a bad shout, sorry, Shy. I tend to fight it off. It only happens really towards the beginning of the game, to be honest with you. Um, but it might be something I look to implement in the future. That's not a bad shout, Shy Shy, at all. Um, it might be something I look into, actually. Um, I don't know how it would work on StreamYard. I'd have to think, I'd have to look into it, but it's not a bad shout. Good afternoon. Hopefully, you win today. George, good afternoon. Hope you're well, my friend. Hope you're all good. Uh, and, you know, Whichever team you're rooting for, I hope, hope for the best. Um, Tony trying to dink it towards Embuemo. West Ham deal with it. Well, it should have been a lot easier than that, but it's just been sort of punted high up in the air. And Ben Rama's battling for it to try and stop it. Suchet coming in to try and help out. Now Brentford come away with the ball. Rico and Buemo back to Rico down the left-hand side, relatively near the corner flag now. He's, in, he's done some dangerous crosses already from this area. Plays it back to short. Looking for, I think, Norgard. But West Ham do deal with it relatively well. I say they deal with it relatively well. Sue Fowl gets himself in a pickle there, almost loses the ball to Rico Henry through sheer stupidity. We are shaky right now. West Ham have started this game very, very shakily. Very shakily. It's not filling me with a lot of confidence right now because uh, we're a bit all over the shop. Errant passes, bad decisions, the usually incredibly consistent uh, Sue Fowl there just losing it for no other reason than he. There's no pressure on him either. Um, where can I watch it? Jay, my friend, link in the description below. Discord, have a click on that. There's a bit called stream links. It has what you're looking for. Uh, let's click back on that. What are we saying? So, 78 minutes, Bowen for Yarmolenko. I think that's fair. I'm going 75 minutes, Lanzini for Bowen, says Hammer Downloader. Fair enough. Going for 75 minutes, Antonio, give a rest. <laughs> he has a hat trick for Yama. Love that sort of confidence. 45 minutes subbed for two and a half time for a P break. I mean, that is actually just the accurate one, isn't it? That is actually just the accurate one, to be fair. Um, Johnson for Kafal on 78 minutes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. He might, yeah, given he, given there were some doubts over him before the game, that wouldn't surprise me. Vlo, uh, Vlasic for Bowen, 75 minutes. Okay. Okay. 76 minutes. Lanzini on. Some, some big, some big, some big calls there. Some big calls there. Interested, interested, interested. Cresswell, free kick given against Canos there. Just an errant, an errant foot. Fair, fair. Judas, I have faith, Judas. I do have faith. I do have faith. It's just a bit shaky right now because uh, Brentford look like they're very up for it early doors. They look like they're, they're flying, whereas uh, we, we look very shaky. Our passing is a bit errant. Our movements are weird. We're giving them all the way cheaply. Just lots of things that you don't love to see. You don't love to see. He look a lot sharp and lost. That's my, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Stephen, West Ham will get top four and also win the Europa League. Mark my words. I'm not that bold, Stephen. I can't lie, but I love the confidence from you. And if it happens, then I'm sure you'll be here on the. Uh, I'm sure you'll be here on the game. The game it gets confirmed and we can all celebrate because my God, that would be incredible, wouldn't it? I can't see it. I, I think it is a bit much. That's an excellent opportunity for Brentford. Fabianski with the save. My God, Brentford. Brentford should have scored by now. <laughs> I don't know how they haven't. Another amazing opportunity. The free kick that came from the uh, Canos Crestwell situation wasn't very good. It sort of ends up being punted over to the the left hand side. Then number five. I'm not sure who it is. I think it might be Zanka. Um, heads it back across goal for Tony, who's in acres of space. Not a defender near him who volleys it clean as you like, but he uh, Fabianski matches it. Um, it's not the it's not the it's not the most difficult save from Fabianski, but it's hard and low next to him. He has to get down quickly. My giddy gosh, played forward from the corner from Brentford, goes out for a West Ham goal kick. But my God, Brentford early doors are all over us right now. We are ten minutes in, and you have to say they have been unlucky not to have scored. They've been unlucky not to well, not unlucky. They've created the better chances. Maybe the way I should say, it. maybe the way I should say. It. We need a little striker. I strongly agree with that. I strongly agree with that. I don't think. Uh, I don't think the. Um, I don't think that's what's our problem today. But I do agree with you. I do agree with you. This high press from Brentford uh, is causing us problems, just like it did in the early stages against Leeds. Um, we're going to have to sort of ride it out a little bit. Um, it's very difficult right now. It's looking very, very difficult. We need to get we need to get a bit more of a hold on this. Um, we're sort of just all over the shop. It's kind of an issue. It's kind of an issue. We need to get our foot on the ball a little bit more, and we need to just be able to ride out their storm a little bit. They're going to press us hard, and we saw 
we saw against Leeds what that does. Pardon me twice that my stomach's going wide. We saw against Leeds that that's not something we deal with too well. If you press in this in this four at the back, this four two three one, you get a lot of um, you press. If you press the double pivot, we do tend to crumble a little bit. There's a pressure point there that really works. Um, and to be honest with you, it's not great right now. Um, Brentford have already had five shots in the opening ten minutes of this game compared to West Ham's none. And that's why they're looking to go hard and fast. They're playing the ball out wide as well. Rico obviously staying super wide. Canos won the free kick, which led to the last Tony chance. So fair play to him as well. Although he's not looking as dangerous as Rico Henry in the opening 10 minutes, but that just is what it is. But West Ham's pressure, West Ham's pressure here doing equally well, forcing them to just boot it forward. Brentford deal with it very well on the off take. Rico Henry steaming through here. Henry tries to play it across, does. Canos collects it. Far side hits it, deflects. It's a corner for Brentford again. Their counter-attack was absolutely rapid there, Brentford. And Rico Henry almost managed... I thought he'd screwed it up with the pass out wide. It looked like he'd slightly screwed it up. But he manages to recover it. I mean, so, well, Canos is the guy who's there. I think he... don't know if he's trying to find Canos or not. But Canos hits it. Rice gets the block and it's out front of a corner. I tell you what, Brentford are firing on all cylinders right now. This is why, I mean, look, let, let's be real. Let's be real. Um, they were... Let's, let's be, you okay? Let's be real. Their pressurizing has done very well. And we, we're seeing very similar to what happened with Leeds, but just with a more competent side or a more informed side, let's say. Um, so it's it's a lot of pressure right now. But if we can, if we can come out of this, if we can deal with it... Let's, We'll, we'll hopefully go into this game like we did with the Leeds game. And that second half against Leeds was absolutely brilliant. So we'll see. Bowen playing with the ball now. What's interesting as well is that it seems to be the opposite of last season. Last season, our big weak points were teams who would sit deep. We couldn't really break them down. And that really was our weak point. You're thinking Newcastle being the optimal example, right? Now this season, it seems to be the exact opposite. It seems to be teams who come at us, press us, work fast. That seems to be our bigger problem. So realistically... Brentford leads people like that. They've been a we've been a big problem. So we need to we need to get our foot on the ball. We need to calm it down. We need to play the game more at our speed as opposed to theirs. And uh let it go. It's a good ball forward from Mikel Antonio here down the left hand side. Flies his way inside. A heavy, heavy touch allows Brentford to recover. But there was a moment there where it looked on. If Mikel Antonio maybe let the ball go a little bit earlier, potentially we would have seen something happen there. Um, but his a, a heavy touch allows Brentford to recover. Um but West Ham regain possession. This is better from West Ham. This is better. Because early doors, it's been it's been rough. Titch, my my friend. How are you, bro? Hope you're good. Hope you're good. If you haven't subscribed to Hammers Fans United, by the way, already, they do good stuff. I was on the channel uh, with Titch just the other day. Just the other day. So definitely go check it out. Hammers Fans United, people. Doing big bits. Kufal down the right-hand side. Tries to cross it in. Wins a corner. Wins a corner. Is it okay to be here as I'm a Man United fan, but also love West Ham? Of course. No, 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 no. Steven, stick around. Stick around, my friend. Of course, you are more than okay to be around. Any any fan from any club is welcome. People who cause trouble aren't welcome, but that includes fans from other clubs. That includes West Ham fans. I don't care. But as long as you're... Listen, I'm, I'm more than happy for you to be around, Steve. Uh, in in the in the description below, mate, there's a thing called Discord. I don't know if you have it. If you join it, it's free. It's a It's a thing. I don't know how to describe it. It's free is the point. Um, there's a bit called stream links on there and it has a, has a, has a link for you. It has a link for you. If you, if you want it, if you want it. Corner for West Ham played in deep header. Just wide from Kurt Zuma from the corner header at the far post nods it down. It was well done as well. Headed towards the floor. Exactly what you want. But it just goes wide. Deep corner from uh, Aaron Cresswell. Very deep. Zuma rises up well and he just can't quite get it on target. He does well. He does very well. Just not quite there. Not quite there. Ain't got it. We'll watch him instead. Well, you know, I'm very sorry. because What a downgrade. <laughs> what a downgrade. I'm very sorry. Very sorry. Um, but yes, I am watching the game from the link in the Discord. I, I can't say that any clearer now. <laughs> I've sort of danced around it for other reasons, but look, I could. I am watching it from the link in the Discord. Um, I can't put the link in the chat because of everything else, but yeah. But yeah. Um, let's have a look. 
Where's my big up? Big up, colorful lad. Big up. Hope you're good, bro. Hope you're well. You know what I mean? Shout out everyone. Shout out everyone. Algeria. Yes, Fatma. Big up Algeria. Ben Rama and Dat. You know? You know? 17 minutes on the clock right now. And to be honest with you, it's been mostly Brentford. West Ham have got a little bit more into the game over the last couple of minutes, but it has been mostly Brentford. They are once again in West Ham's area here, cleared away from Declan Rice. Um, we need to be, to be honest with you, we need to go full counter-attacking right now. We need to go full counter-attacking. We need to be punting these balls upfield. We need Mick Antonio not to be dropping deep. And then utilize the space like he has done now. Mikel Antonio, through on the right-hand side, cuts it in. He's in the area now. This is a good opportunity. He takes it with his left foot. Why, Mikael? Uh... <sighs> it was a good opportunity for Mikel Antonio there. That's sort of what we need to be doing. We need to be utilizing his speed to get in the spaces. We know he likes to work in the channels because he's a winger, probably. It's just this sort of natural position. If we like to just punt it in towards him, he's going to get a lot of success. Brentford, they press high, but that leaves a lot of space in behind. The back three helps them a little bit with that. Ben Rama tries to pull it across, can't quite do it. Uh, that helps a lot with that, but he does get into good spaces. He needs to just make the right decisions when he's in that. He had two people alongside him there. Both of them were running into dead ends, but he was going to shoot with his weak foot from just outside the area. It was unlikely. Ben Rama hits it. Deflects off and into the hands of Rhea, but it was close. It was close. Smash that like button. Yes, yeah, smash it. Get in there, boys. <laughs> we hit an insane. I think it ended up at 4-2-2 by the end of the stream last time, which was a record. And I'm and I'm saying it's almost entirely because of Titch and his support. The Hammers fans United support. You know, you get that vibe, the warm feeling inside. That's why it happened. 4-2-2 is the record. That was the record last time. Hit that like button. Maybe we'll hit it again. I doubt it because that's just an insane number. Just an insane number. However, we're already at one six. Oh, Jesus Christ, we're already at one six eight. It might be possible, people. It might be possible. And subscribe if you're new right here. Do you know what I mean? All that good stuff. All that good stuff. West Ham trying to build momentum here, as Brendo's just said in the chat. Coup foul on the right hand side, getting him to decent possession. But Rico Henry, I tell you what, Rico Henry defending well there. I didn't know. If, I didn't think he had it in him, but he, he stood up well against uh, Coup foul there. He wanted to put a cross in. To be honest, better than Coup foul was standing up against him, and I did not think. That uh, I did not think that Rico, if you'd said out of the two who would have a better defensive performance so far today, I would have said Guval 100%, but it, it does tend to be Rico Henry. Um, what's happened to Suchek? He was not the most technically skilled, but he's become so prone to errors. Uh, if you press him hard, he can't pass, and that's always been an issue. And that's always been an issue. It is what it is. You know? It is what it is. It's just, it's just, his, it's just him as a player. But a corner for West Ham on the right hand side. Aaron Cresswell steps up to take it. Last time it was very deep, looking for Zuma. This time instead, looking for the front post. Ogbonna tries to nod it. I don't know if he's trying to nod it on to someone else or whether he was trying to score. Either way, it's not been good. <laughs> Either way, it was not great. It sort of bounces out. Is what it is. Is what it is. Is what it is. <laughs> Should Donny van der Beek go to West Ham? I think he would fit in really well and maybe do big things there. What's your opinion if it did happen? I would love Don Donny van der Beek. I would love Donny van der Beek. I can't lie to you. Um, I think he's really good. Big boot upfield by Renford. Uh, I think he's really good. I think it's not worked out for him at, at Man United. And I think part of that is it's just not Ollie's decision. So when you say, would he, if what would happen? It's a good ball through by Brentford here. They're through. Hit by Canos. Saved by Fabianski. The follow up from Bramo. Saved by Fabianski again. My God, it has gone over the line. It's 1-0 to Brentford. I couldn't tell whether or not it had. I couldn't tell. There was like a moment there where it seemed to sort of... Uh, I, look, I don't know. The point is, is it's Brentford 1-0 up against West Ham here. And you can't say it isn't deserved. You can't say it isn't well deserved. Uh, I've just realized I haven't changed the title of this video, which I need to do now. Ball forward, Tony plays through, um, I'm not sure who, I think it's Norgai, maybe Yan out. well, um, not Yan out. he's not playing, uh, but then anyway, it was Canos that he finds, Canos does well and forces a good save from Fabianski, and then Fabianski can't keep hold of it, he can only sort of palm it because he's a full stretch, and then Bremo's the fastest to react, and Fabianski does get across to try and stop it, but it doesn't quite happen. Ends up going over the line, unfortunately, for West Ham. And unfortunately for Fabianski, it's Brentford 1-0 up here away to West Ham United. 
frustrating. Very frustrating. Um, but not surprising. Not surprising. You have to say, you have to say that. To be honest with you, it has been coming. They have been the better side. Kind of look like a Brentford goal is coming. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, not enjoying the result, but loving the game. End to end. It is very end to end, Kirikos. That's fair. I think this is a good one for the neutrals. Um, Pinnock and Suchek just going to war there uh, on the floor. Like it was a flipping game of uh, Twister. Not the rapper. When I wake up in the morning, love. Do, 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 do. What song that was, by the way? Sunshine Twister. I got my mind on my money, money on my mind. I got my finger on the trigger, say another rhyme. And when I wake up in the modern, I got to hit the mix. Stop that, but you understand what I mean. It's a great song. He also raps way too fast that I can't keep up with. But yeah, you, you're you not shocked. Not shocked. Brentford have been much the better team. They've created significantly more chances. And that's that was dangerous. That was dangerous. And Bremer was the fastest to react. West Ham a little bit, a little bit slow. But we do have a corner now. Back on that right-hand side once more, Cresswell stepping up to take it. We've done one deep, which went well. We've done one short, didn't go as well. Let's see what happens here. Um, Wiki, link in the description below, Discord, click on it. There's something in there for you in the section called Stream Links. Played in from Cresswell. We're looking for that front post. Bonner again, doesn't quite happen. Ben Rama swazzes it from range, deflects out. West Ham regain possession of the ball. Bowen, with his weak foot, tries to bend in across from deep, very deep. It's bold, but Mbwemo does good block. Don't know why he even tried that, to be honest, but it was what it was. Um, was what it was. Throw into West Ham on the right-hand side, deep into Brentford territory. Thrown back. We're under a lot of pressure here. It would have been easy for David Moyes to switch to the five at the back. I can't lie. It would have been easy for David Moyes to switch to five at the back. However, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. And potentially we're seeing the effects of it, right? And I'm I'm happy with him not doing that. I can't lie. As much as as much as it seems like it might have been the right decision at this point, I'm happy that we're still sticking to this formation that stood us so well, and that we're trying to at least take it two teams. Um, but at the same time, this is we're showing we're showing some negative effects here. Brentford they're pressing higher. They press the double pivot of Rice and Suchek. It's not something that we deal with relatively well, as we saw against Leeds. Um, there's certainly a lot of nervousness there when you when you push that double pivot, um, and then they're only being four behind. Two, if you include, if you're thinking just centre backs, we're in big trouble. And Buemo, Tony, they're making a lot of runs. Canos is arriving late. Rico's arriving late, and uh, it's making it. It's causing us issues. It's causing us issues. And to be fair, Brentford's three at the back right now, dealing relatively well with West Ham's press. We don't press like Brentford do. We're not coming at you rapidly, but we're just trying to slowly reduce your passing options. And they're dealing with it very well. They're dealing with it relatively well. They are ending up just booting it along, as you would expect, as you would expect from pressing. But at the same time, if we're being honest, um, the boots upfielder finding people, you know, and it's not just Ivan Tony either. It's not just like they're booting it and Ivan Tony's getting his head on it and they're winning second balls. No, a lot of their players are getting involved in this and it's working for them right now. 25 minutes in, it's 1-0 Brentford and you have to say they completely deserve it. They do completely deserve it. Um, but we'll see how we'll see how it goes on. Like I said, Leeds was a very similar first half. Leeds was a very similar first half. Second half, we stepped up seven. We stepped up a gear or two, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, we win that game. Um, Brentford are, although better defensively than Leeds, as someone pointed out in the chat earlier on, they are certainly weak there. Not weak, but susceptible. Porous defense, and that's the that's the thing we're going to have to look at full force here. Is there is some some porous nature to this defense that we should be we should be taking advantage of? You know, they press very high, they're leaving spaces behind, and right now we're not doing it enough. Um, Mikel Antonio needs to just stay forward. I mean, he's just punt it at him at times, and I think that's kind of how we're going to create a lot of chances. But we're not doing it right now. We're not doing it too much right now. But we're getting a wicked, but we are getting better. We are getting better. UFC, this isn't UFC, silly. Uh, if you're asking how I'm watching the game, link in the description below. There's a thing scrolling across the bottom of your screen. It says, looking for a stream, check the Discord below. Click on that. Antonio lays it short. Pulled across. I'm watching it from the link in the, in the description in Discord. You click on Discord. There's a bit called stream links. It has options for you to watch the game. I'm watching on that. That is how I'm watching the match. Uh, I think the strikers are asleep a little. I mean... Yeah, I, I I think we're just not firing on all cylinders, but Rice with a good challenge there. 
it ends up in the feet of a uh, Mikel Antonio into Ben or into Fornals. He made a good run, and it just doesn't end up working out. We're getting the numbers forward, I guess, in these in these instances, but um, we need to be. To be fair, would I be this stressed if we weren't one 0 down and Brentford weren't doing as well? Probably not. Probably not. So maybe I should stop saying what I'm saying. I need, I need to reassess that. You know what I mean? Teams running from deep as our crypt tonight. No wait, teams that sit deep our crypt tonight. No wait, teams that press us our crypt tonight. Uh, yeah. All, uh, exactly. Couldn't have said about myself. <laughs> uh, like Leeds in the first half. Yeah, this is exactly what I expected, to be fair. I expected us to deal with it slightly better. Um, and I expected Brentford to not be as good as they have been, or not be as effective as, as, as they have been. But um, yeah, I, I mean, we knew this was going to happen. We knew this was going to happen. And that's what I mean by I said it could, it would have been easy for David Moyes to change the five at the back to try and uh, anticipate that. Not that, not that Kobe getting him in. Um, that's what I mean by it would have been easy for us to do that. Because to be honest with you, to be honest with you, like, how do I word this? It would have been easy to do it because we knew it was going to happen. We sort of played the same system. Well, we sort of played the same tactics as we were playing last season, just in a slightly different form with a slightly different formation, right? Brentford are uh, having to make a forced change here. They already had to make one during the warm up, and now they are. Now we are seeing a second. So it would have been it would have been easy, right? Because we already knew what Brentford were going to do. We knew roughly they would set up in this formation. We knew they would press, okay? We knew they would press, especially when they're pressing Rice and Suchek. This is where the issues come. Because these are the people who make the team tick, who get the ball forward into good areas, right? They're the people. And so if you're pressing them and pushing them further and further back, you're essentially isolating all these people from the game. We knew that was going to happen. And so you could have made an argument for, what have I even clicked on there? Clicks on the Epic Game Store. <laughs> I didn't mean that. You could have made an argument for changing this to a five at the back. You put an extra centre back in. You have Cresswell and Kufal as wing backs. Maybe you make Cresswell an extra centre back. You bring on someone else like Masawaku, and you could maybe potentially effectively counter attack better from that. However, this system, although looking different tactically, is essentially what we were playing last season. We still relatively sit kind of deep and we still hit them on the counter attack it's just we get for now's bowing a lot further forward and ben rama it acts as a sort of auxiliary forward as opposed to having an extra center back so it could have it could have it could have been a thing but we decided to stick with what we have and that's not a bad thing whatsoever that's not a bad thing whatsoever i love that because i've really loved this team so far but at the same time we need to figure out how to avoid teams who press the double pivot because that's becoming increasingly an issue. Leeds obviously do it, but they haven't been great this year. So when you see that, you're like, okay, we can we can sort of fight our way through that despite them playing so well. Um, Brentford have been good this year and we're seeing the effects of it. They are the better team. They deserve to be one and up. How we deal with that, we dealt with it against Leeds. We came out in the second half. Part of that was just Leeds dropping off. Um, Will the same thing happen here? We'll see. We will see. Uh, Brentford had uh, Baptiste come off um, the central midfielder who's starting today, and Jensen has come on. Jensen always thought looked decent when I saw him in the championship, so we'll see. We'll see how that we'll see how that ends up. My stream skipped, so I need to pause this for a bit until we're, we're, we're equal again. West Ham is starting to build a little bit better, starting to find a little bit more space, a little bit more success in that, that regard. They're, they're passing it around a little bit more calmly than they were, finding a bit more success. However, still not still not fit and firing on all cylinders yet, but certainly some positive signs after Brentford's goal. But it's easy to have positive signs when you're one nil down. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We've got to attack so much more than what we're doing. I agree, Joanne. I agree. Um, Brentford aren't letting us right now. Yeah, Kira Cross just said it. Brentford aren't allowing us right now. They're 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 doing very well right now. Um, I think I think we would. I th personally, I would like to just see us be punting it into the channels towards Mikel Antonio. I think that's the way. When when you're getting high pressed, it's something. It's something. 
Oh, it's a good opportunity for West Ham here. Bowen. He goes down inside the area. I didn't see anything there. I didn't see anything there, but he's still down. He's still down. He looks like he's been punched in the uh, the liver there or whatever they call it in boxing. But he is still down. I don't think it is. Yeah, but I, I think we need to be playing it into the channels. Uh, we're going to... I think we're getting a VAR check here. Yeah, a VAR check against Bowen, but I can't see it being given. It's a good it's a good ball by Ben Rama, by the way. Through the legs of Onyeka to get it towards him, but um, not happening. Declan Rice with a good recovery challenge there and then hoofed up the park. Not happening. Because there's a difference between hoofing it and playing it into the channels, right? There is a, there is a definitive difference. And we kind of... What we need to be doing is... Not just hoofing it randomly. We need Mikel Antonio, in my opinion, to be staying forward, right? We need Mikel Antonio to be st to be staying in an advanced position. Let me show you. Let me let me just, let me sort of try to explain what I'm saying. So Brentford, right? They push forward. You get Canos flying forward. You get Rico Henry flying forward. That really isolates these three players, right? And it leaves a lot of space, especially here and especially here. Now, we know Mikel Antonio likes to sort of move into those areas. He likes to move up and down across the width of the pitch. We need to be hitting it forward into these areas where there's a lot of space for Mikel Antonio to run onto because that will force Brent to come flying backwards where there is a lot of space. That's kind of what we need to be doing more consistently, which we aren't doing right now. Because the easiest way, the easiest way to avoid a press, and it's something if you watched uh, German football a lot, for example, uh, back when it was Pep and, and Jürgen and that, that was one of the things that was so apparent is you can avoid presses by just punting it over the top of them. It's not ideal. It's not beautiful or anything, but it does work. It does work. And it's something we need to be, in my opinion, utilizing more often. It's just hitting it over the top to avoid their press. Because once you get past their press, it's, a, it's, it's not as effective as it seems. It's not as effective as it seems. Corner for West Ham, this time on the left-hand side. Cresswell taking it again. This time looking sort of deep. Uh, Zuma can't get his head to it. It wasn't a great corner. Um, Zuma was completely underneath it. Zufal tries to just hook it back into the area. Can't quite. West Ham maintain possession of the ball with Pablo Fornals at the back. He's being pressed by Embuemo here. He's forced all the way back to the goalkeeper. It's good pressing from Brentford again. Um, got out very, very fast, making an impression. And that's that long ball I was talking about. Into those channels. Antonio can't quite get there this time. But it's that thing where Brentford all of a sudden are playing on the back foot. They're turning they're turning away. They're having to face towards goal and sprinting backwards. That's what we need to do. Allow Antonio to create that space in behind by making by utilizing the space that's there, allowing him drawing people away, drawing players away. That will allow there will be a little bit more space for uh, the likes of Fornals, Ben Rama, and Bowen to find, utilize, and hopefully. Uh, score from that's kind of what i think we need to be doing right now it's not what we're doing enough um and brentford are brentford are sitting relatively comfortable here although west ham have, west ham are getting better as the half goes on we are starting to uh step into the game a little bit more start to find a little bit more space a little bit more success with passing but every time brentford go forward they look dangerous here and tony's completely done kurt zuma there and zuma with a challenge right at the death it's a free kick and it's a yellow card and it's in a very, very good position for Brentford. A very good position. And God is speaking to me right now, it looks like. God, how are you? Uh, Ivan Tony flying through. He, he he manages to just dink it around Zuma, who just looks a bit nervous. And Zuma doesn't get a touch. It looked like for a second he got a touch, but he didn't. He didn't. Here we go. 2 0 Leicester. Okay, okay, okay. Who are they even facing? I can't even remember. I can't even remember. 2 p.m. kickoffs are difficult for your boy. He does not fully concentrate. There's four Brentford players standing over it right now, discussing who's going to take this free kick. It's in a really good position, but it's one of those ones where you say, is it too close? Can they get it up and over the wall? That's the, uh, that's the, well, that's the, that's the, the thing to say, isn't it? Four Brentford players standing over it. Fabianski shouting to his wall. It's a big wall. It's basically our entire squad is in this wall. Um, if you're asking where the Discord is, it's in the link below, Luca. Description. 
It literally says it. Check the description below. Click. It says join our Discord. Right. Free kick to Brentford. Free kick to Brentford. Our entire squad, all of them, standing in the wall. Ben Rama ready to try and close it down. And Buemo standing over it. So is Canos. I think it was in Buemo. Hits the wall. It was too close. Rico Henry tries to whip it back in. Zuma gets the head away. He's on a yellow. That's something we're going to have to be aware of for the rest of this game. And now Mikan Antonio collects the ball. This is We need to counterattack from this. We need to counterattack. Mikan Antonio does well to keep control of the ball. His pass to Bowen was a little bit over here, but that's fine. Bowen collects it. Brentford have gone back in numbers now. We were just a little bit too slow. That pass, just a little bit over here. <sighs> Frustrating. Frustrating. I'm a bit concerned with Zuma getting a yellow. That's not good for us in any way, shape, or form. Brentford are pushing higher. They're pressing hard against those centre backs. They're finding they're finding those centre backs quite often. Zuma specifically was at fault for uh, his, his hesitation and he started a little bit, which allowed Ivan Tony to stream free, which ended up resulting in him fouling him for the yellow card in the first place. It's not good. Not good. We don't want to see our centre backs on a yellow card this early against the Brentford team who are looking very, very dangerous. Eight thirty-seven minutes on the clock. Um and we are struggling to keep hold of possession. We've got a little bit better since Brentford's goal, but at the same time, Brentford are still looking very, very good for it and looking much the better side. Looking like they deserve to be in the Premier League. Deserve to be in the Premier League. They are looking very good right now. Raya just forced to boot it long. A heavy challenge there from Zanka on, uh, I think, Cresswell. On four nows. Four nows is the one who's down. It was a heavy late challenge by Zanka. He came in hard um, on four nows. Late as well. Don't know if it's yellow. I think it's a, a warning type thing. But at the same time, if he did it again, you'd be straight yellow for that. Not, not, it's just, just unnecessary. Just unnecessary. You right, Ryan? Hope you're well, my friend. Hope you're good. Hope you're good. I would take the other half off. Because the thing is, is Tony, when, when Brentford play quickly, once we've been in control of the ball up the other end, up the other end of the pitch, um, Brentford, Brentford's two of Mbwemo and Tony, uh, do look slightly isolated when they aren't allowed to build through the lines, when they're just going quickly. They are relatively isolated. And so if we... It's a dangerous game to be playing. It's a very dangerous game to be playing. Don't get me wrong. But we might benefit from making this as hard and fast as we want it to be. You know what I mean? Just hitting it long, trying to scream forward at them and then letting them scream forward at us. It seems like an insane thing to do, but I do genuinely think it might kind of work. Like, I, I think we're a better attacking side. Still, this is a good opportunity for West Ham side. Ben Rama just outside the area, hits it straight into the hands of Raya. Bowen was there. Fornells was there. Antonio was there. Lots of shots coming in from West Ham when there's op other opportunities for the pass. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, that opportunity. I, I Ben Rama can hit them from range. Bowen was frustrated. It didn't come to him. But to be honest with you, he wasn't in an unreal position to be able to find the pass. Um, diff difficult, but... Another opportunity. Another opportunity. Free kick to West Ham, just about on the halfway line for a high boot from Canos on Suchek. Canos uh, trying to explain how actually it was the fact Suchek's head was low by doing this. You know? Um, referee not, not, not having it. Seeing the replay of the Ben Rama shot there. It wasn't bad, but it was just directly sort of at Raya. You know? Five minutes left of the first half. It's been a it's been a difficult one, a turgid one for West Ham, but they they they've they've got better as it's gone on. Ben Rahman on the edge of the area again, hits it. <gasps> oh, just wide, just wide. Again, we have got better as the half has gone on. We're starting to find space in and around the box. We're starting to find players in and around the box, 
Antonio finds Ben Rama inside the D, tries to bend it into that right hand side. Rhea might have had it covered and it just goes wide, but Ben Rama's looking lively once again. He's been good the last couple of games. He's looking lively. He's looking lively. Maybe, maybe. To be honest with you, I don't know if it's a hangover or whether it's just this is a this is a system that works against us, you know. Obviously, we're playing a lot of games in quick succession, but a lot of these people have had rests for those games, you know. We aren't playing just this 11 in every single game. So is it a situation where it's a, a slight hangover? Potentially, potentially. But for me, I think it's just more a case of this is a system that works against us. We sort of leads in their first half as well. You know, you know, we're getting better as the half goes on. We're getting better as the half goes on. I'm so used to us winning. I forgot about it. Yeah, it's weird, GP, isn't it? It's weird. I was saying this to mum, my mum yesterday. I was like, we're just a good team now. It's weird. Um, This feels better. This feels more, I feel more at home with this sort of like, oh, what we're we doing kind of vibe. You know what I mean? No. In a circle, I would, I would, I would, I would say, I would, I would, I wouldn't say we're getting destroyed. Um, early doors, we were getting, we were getting got at very, very successfully. At this point, I think we're okay. We're okay. We're, we're dealing with it relatively well. We're, we're getting there. We're getting with there. They're still sort of coming at us in a lot of waves. They're still hitting us, but at the same time, you know, we're getting into more spaces. We're finding more success. So I don't think we're getting destroyed yet. Um, but, you know, if teams press us, that's what happens. That's how, that seems to be our kryptonite this season a little bit. Um, it seems to be our kryptonite this season. Miller's game. Hello. Hope you're well, my friend. Hope you're good. Hope you're good. Oh, Saibin Rama. Ooh. Ooh. And again, the, the thing is with Brentford, right? is they can just sort of like, as much as we want to force teams into the hurried, panicked, clear ball over the top, just big punt, right? That's kind of what we want to force teams into doing, making those mistakes. Brentford kind of can do it because Tony's so good and so big and so strong. Um, and Buemo is so quick that it can sort of work for them. Um, it's not perfect, as we've just seen there. It, same thing happened. They got punted forward. West Ham end up with possession of the ball. But... It's less effective against them than it is others. Thomas Suchek has a really good ball through to Thomas Sufal. Antonio's there. He looks for him. He can't, he's... <laughs> it can't quite work. It can't quite work. Appeals for a penalty. Uh, I didn't see anything, but was I'm sure we'll see a replay in a second. But my God, it was so close. My God, it was so close. Pontus Janssen, the centre-back, is down currently. Brentford's captain is down. <sighs> it was close. It was close. Frustratingly so. We got in well there. Suchek played a really nice ball through to Sufal, who gets who gets forward in a into a really dangerous area, practically in the six yard box. Pulls it across from Antonio. It's just ever so slightly behind him. It's just ever. So slight, Jesus Christ, my stomach. I apologize. Ever so slightly behind him, and uh, Brentford sort of get away with that. Not get away with it because that suggests you know issues, but they did sort of deal with it relatively well. But West Ham get forward. I, five minutes of added. Five minutes. Do you just say five minutes of added time? Is it five minutes of added time? Is that what we just said? Five minutes. Where'd that come from? I mean, I'm fine with it. I guess there was an injury and everything else. I guess, but. Still. Corner to West Ham out on the left-hand side. Pablo Fornaus to take it. Pablo Fornaus to take it. Suchek and Zanka just, just wrestling each other. Zanka is just holding him. Man marking. He's played in, was looking for looking for Suchek. He can't quite find it. And Boemer on the ball, tries a little step over. Ben Rama counsels it out.
just just joined your just joined your Patreon. Thank you very much, GP. I appreciate it. Now I'm joined to both of you and Hams Network. Still in contact. Fair. Thank you very much for joining. I, I much appreciate it. Hey, everyone, remember, it's the beginning of the month, which means it's the best time of the month to join Patreon. The earlier you join, the more bang for your buck you get because you get charged when you join in at the beginning of the month. Loads of extra stuff on there, including stuff from myself, Geo, and Gonzo, and as well as audio versions of all of our videos from the amazing Rebecca. So, hey, if you want to have a look at our Patreon, link in the description below, have a look. It's the, it's the best time of the month to do it. But GP, thank you so much. I appreciate it, bro. Love that. Love that from you. Uh... And hey, get involved. We've got two spanners, one hammer tomorrow about 5 p.m. UK time. I think it'll be maybe a little bit after that. I might, we might end up going live about half five, probably. Um, myself and Ray will be hosting Peach. Peach will be guest on the show from uh, West Ham Random. Bowen getting forward well here. Wriggles away, pulls it back across. Not a great cross, though, but not bad. Not bad. West Ham again. You can't act like West Ham haven't been getting more and more joy as this half has gone on. Um, West Ham have certainly been getting better and better. Um, how long left of this half? Asks Matthew. Matthew, it was a five minutes of added time, so we've got about two and a half minutes to go. Um, it started early doors. It started early doors with um, Brentford playing very high, very fast, like similarly to how Leeds did in a similar struggle, a, strimmer, a similarly difficult situation to be in, right? It was going, it was always going to be a bit of a struggle. Um, because that sort of seems to be our weakness this season is when teams press when teams press high and they press fast, changing to the four at the back allows them to sort of press the, the double pivot and and we we can't deal with it super well. We can't deal with it super well. And early doors, it was all Brentford because of it. They were looking absolutely lightning, looking super, super dangerous. Uh, whereas we were struggling a little bit. However, as the half has gone on, we've sort of got our foot on it a little bit more. It's not like we've been incredible we've not been up to our best as of yet we've not stepped through the gears significantly to the point where we're creating consistently great chances or anything but we're starting to show that Brentford aren't defensively the most sound team in the world Brentford aren't gonna be um look Brentford are conceding goals for a reason and it's not and they're not like where well, I tried to get a corner fog bonnet I was trying to figure out which one was happening Brentford aren't the most defensively sound team in the world. And we've seen that as this half has gone on. We've gotten more into it. We've got more people in and around the box. And it's what it's kind of ended up happening is we've seen more success. You know, we've seen more success. We've created some chances, some good chances. And maybe just maybe if we picked out a better pass once or twice instead of taking a shot or just the pass was a little bit better than slightly behind Antonio or whatever, we might, this game might not be 1-0 to Brentford. But as it stands, it is 1-0 to Brentford. And I do think they deserve it. I do think they're the better team, and I do think they're on board with it. I do think they're on board with it. West Ham doing well here. Bowen out on the right-hand side. Rice, who's in acres of space. They're sitting very deep now, Brentford. Sitting very deep. There's a lot of space for Declan Rice to just pick out the right pass. He does. For now, who's come over to his right-hand side, lays it short to Kufal, who just can't get there. Onyeka tries to stop it. Kufal tries to hook it back across. Close, close, but no cigar. Zuma and Tony fighting there. Zuma comes out with a win and then starts charging towards the area. For now, on top, tries to put it in towards Kurt. Happy Zuma. Doesn't quite work. He's claiming the corner. And half-time whistle is going. We cut live. To the person who's called my Scottish friend earlier on. Hello, my Scottish friend. How are you? Yeah, not, not good, is it? <laughs> I'm not good. It's not good. It's they deserve to be winning, Charlie. They deserve to be winning. I agree with that. I do think it's got better. I do think it's got better. And we're seeing sort of what you brought up in the uh, the beginning of the stream when you were talking about like they are susceptible at the back. We've seen as the half's gone on and they've slowed down just a little bit and we've managed to get our foot on the ball a little bit more. There, There's definitely space for us to score here, but that beginning was so lightning from them that it almost gave us no chance. Yeah, they came out the traps. It was almost like we weren't expecting Brentford to attack or something. I don't know why that is, but it's similar to Leeds. You know, Leeds came out and had a pop at us at Ellen Road in the first 10, 15 minutes. I thought, at Ellen Road, we were all over the place today. I thought defence were all over the place. Difference is, Brentford are better going forward than what Leeds were last week, and we've got mm. punished for it. The scoreline's the same, but they were fortunate to have only conceded one, to be honest with you. Um, I think Brentford have got a bang on so far, and 
like I said, I've watched them quite a bit this season. When they have gone ahead or against Liverpool, even when they were drawing, they were very good at slowing the game down. And, and I don't mean by passing the ball, I mean by throwing goal kicks or whatever. They were very, very good at restricting the opposition, slowing the game down. And I think we can expect to see a lot of that in the second half, really. And I think a few of our players are already getting a little bit wound up. I think the referees are already... It feels like he's starting to lose control of the game already in the first yeah. half. Um, I don't know. I was quite confident we were going to get win at half time against Leeds, despite being a goal down, because I felt that like we created enough in the first half, mm-hmm. although we weren't playing that well. I'm not feeling that today. Um, I was nervous before the game in the first half has only sort of confirmed to me why I was nervous, and that is because Brentford are a bloody good team. Why do you think, before I go P, which I did need to do quite badly at this point, why do you think they, why do you think this high pressing style works so well against us? We've seen it twice now in a row, Leeds and then Brentford. Why do you think this works so well against us now? Whereas like last season, for example, we sort of tend to deal relatively well. With it. Is it the change in formation? Like, what do you think it is? Um, I think we've probably got a centre back who is more inclined to pass it now in Kurt Zuma. Um, like, I don't mean this to be harsh on Craig Dawson. Craig Dawson is more likely to go long immediately. Not He would take two touches and the third one, if he can't pass it, you'll get rid of it. Yeah. Zuma is happy to, to play out of the back and dribble out from the back. I think there's that there. I think today in particular, I think Sufal's been crap. I think he's been a, a good player for Brentford in the first half. Mm. Um, I think Suchek's not been great again, to be honest with you. He's in spells. He looks like he's getting into the game. We think, here we go. And then he just disappears again for 10 minutes. Um, I'm not sure. I think today we've had the success we've seen today is actually playing it long in yeah, between the centre-backs for Antonio to run in between. But now they've scored. They don't need to push up so much now. It's like, well, we can sit back now. And that space that you were running into, we're going to close that off a little bit. And now we're going to play the long ball to Tony and and see what you're going to do about it kind of thing. Um, it's going to be difficult for us in the second half, Charlie. We need to change something, though. We cannot do that again in the second half because last 10, 15, we were getting in the, getting the ball, getting into the game and stuff, but I don't think Reyes had a save to make yet. It's been the one from Ben Rama straight on, and that's been about it. Yeah. Fair. All right. I'll see you in a sec. Enjoy yourself. Cheers. Right. Anyone uh, in the live chat, get your comments in. I'll take, have a little look and see what you guys are saying there. Um, Ionic says there's a goal or two in us in the second half. Well, we're going to need at least one, aren't we? Um, Banks not too keen on the referee. I, th- I have to agree. I don't think Banks is having the best game um, so far. Steve doesn't think he's doing very well either. I think the problem is you let that tackle go, that foul on Suchek go uh, on the on Yak, how he pronounced his name. He did that studs up thing on Suchek and he let it go. And oh, I sort of thought, fair enough. But then Creswell did one on Canos and he was like, well, you're going to have to let that go. And he's almost set the standard now, which is I'm going to let most things go. And there's a lot of naughty fouls going in. Um, I think Antonio's probably going to get booked again today. I've, I've sort of detected a frustrated Antonio up front, a couple of stupid... Um, a couple of stupid fouls he's done here. Um, Ian says, can't be that bad for another half. We're getting bullied. Um, Ed says, do you think Suchek's games are, is affected by Vice pushing on? To some extent, yes. Um, but if if we are going to use Rice as the one that goes forward to that, and it's, it's going to mean that Suchek doesn't play well, then let's try Crowley or something. I think we've almost got to do something. We can't just... I don't know. It's a bit frustrating in the middle of the park. We're not really playing very well. We're supposed to be the better team. It's, I think Brentford are by far the better team in the first half, by the way. They really, really are. Um, Jeffrey says, uh, individual mistakes, not necessarily anybody who needs to take off, just everybody needs to be better. I don't disagree with that. I think sometimes there's one or two players. I think, like I said, I think Sufar's having a really bad game, to, like, really bad. Um, that's not helping. There's been a couple of times, it's almost just laziness. Do you know that just before the half time there, we had a throw in. It took about 10 minutes to get to to get a throw in taken and gave it to Antonio. He just launched across the other side of the park. Now, again, what he's trying to do, Creswell's over there. We just belted it. Now we went for a throw in. It was just cheap, giving away possession, um, quite cheap. Would have put on Benjamin? I probably would. Um, I probably would. I probably would put him on. Um, Richard, I agree. I think we are looking tired. I said this before the game with Gons. I said, I think this might be the game where all the Europa League football catches up with us. Not Thursday, not just Thursday against Vienna. Thursday, Leeds, 
the two games against Man United, the game away is our group. I think it's all now coming to bite us in the arse because I think Brentford have a high tempo, high press, high energy. And I'm not sure. I think it might just catch up with us today. JP, do I wish for another game or do I prefer to down for bigger matches? Um, I tend to not get to the bigger ones, actually. I tend to miss those, but I no longer live in Scotland. So I live in England now. And once a month, I go back to Scotland. So I was back in Scotland over the last couple of days. So I left at 5 o'clock this morning to get back here to do videos, which is essentially work now. So there's there's no way I could have went to the game today, which is frustrating. But uh, the next Europa League game, I'll get to. And I'm hoping to get to Everton away. I've had to apply for the to go through the ballot for their Everton tickets. So fingers crossed I could get to them. I've since moving, I've somehow found it harder to get to the games at home than I did when I lived in the northeast of Scotland. How that works, I don't know. But the advantage is it's easier to get to the away ones. So I've done Newcastle and Southampton and hopefully I'll get Everton as well. Anyway, bye. Uh, Michael saying that's nice and to check are outnumbered. I agree. I agree with that, Michael, but then that's where you don't go down the middle. That's where you use. If you're getting outnumbered in the middle, that means you've got extra players somewhere on the pitch, right? It's 11 v 11 at the end of the day. Now, that space for West Ham is out wide. Ben Rama and Bowen, and then Creswell and Sufal as well, of going up against their wing backs and just saying to Ben, but what are you going to do here? And I think that's what we need to do. If anything, I think we need to get down the sides a lot, lot more, get the ball out the middle of the pitch, Get down the sides, get their wing backs, push back as much as possible. We need to get right, we need to stop Rico Henry and Canos coming forward. Get them wing backs, push back, force them into a back five rather than back three. And that will create room for Sufal and Creswell to come forward as well. Um, I think we need to just get down the sides a little bit more. I think I think Finals is looking okay. Funny enough, I think the two players that had a bit of a rest on Thursday, uh, Finals and Bowen, are probably looking quite good going forward. Uh, ben Rama picked up well in the last five, ten minutes. Um, Thomas thinks the three attacking midfielders need to alternate to drop a little deeper to collect the ball. I disagree. Um, I'm going to put on Vlaskic and Lanzini. Um, not yet. Not yet. Um, eventually, you kind of got to if nothing changes. I would be looking... I would like to see... I would, I'd be tempted to take off Sufal and get um, Ben Johnson on because Ben Johnson's form. And also, I think Sufal's playing badly. Why would you not get a player that's performing badly? It doesn't mean he's a bad player or anything. It doesn't mean he doesn't start the next game after international break. Just today, I think Sufal's had a real bad game. So I'm maybe looking to get him off of Ben Johnson. And I would either move Suchek forward so we can utilise his height a bit because... Benford are going to sit back a bit more now, so we need to sort of come up with a plan to, to, to go up against Brentford sitting deeper. And I think Sue checking in advanced positions to do that. I would probably put Fernals in with Declan Rice for the second half and put Sue check down through the middle with Antonio, really. And if you are going to bring on Lanzini or Vlasic, I'd like to see them come on for Sue check or Declan Rice. I, I, if I, I don't think Rice is having a great game, I don't think Sue check's having a great game. But I don't want to see a like for like replacement at the minute. I don't want to see. Ben Rama off for Vlasic. I don't want to see Bowen off for Lanzini. It's not just personnel. I don't think it's our tactics. I don't think our tactics are quite working tonight. I think um, Brentford are just really good, to be honest with you. Um, you know, Bertie saying Moyes doesn't seem to have been prepared for this. He's a bit surprised. I think both teams just thought we'll play our way. Both managers have said we'll play our way. And I think Brentford is just working at the minute. They've taken their chances. We haven't. They've created slightly better chances. Um, but now it's a case of what you're going to do in the second half. And I think Brentford will sit deeper. And I think you're going to see a lot of time wasted in the second half, particularly from throw-ins and particularly from Pinnock. Whenever I've watched him, that left centre-back Pinnock is the one that takes an age when it comes to throw-ins. Sorry, we usually do as well, to be fair. But ours is, ours is less a tactic and more just we've been terrible at throwing for years. And I don't fully understand why. Um, do you, do you yeah, think I, we're going to go on and win this or...? Um, I don't know. Well, I, the thing is, I don't know. We don't. The thing is with Leeds is we figured out sort of we started to deal with it with Leeds, but Leeds don't. Leeds don't let up. They don't change their. They don't change their style. You know how you were just saying Brentford can now sort of sit back and sort of relax a little bit. Marcelo Bielsa is not that kind of guy. He's more like, cool, I've got one. I'm now going to keep going and we're just going to keep going. It doesn't matter. We're just going, going, going. And so we're not going to see that sort of... 
we we can't come back into the game in the same way we did against Leeds, right? So like you say, it's about can we change up what we're doing? And as you again, as you say, doing sort of like for likes isn't maybe the way of doing that. Um, and that's when bringing on someone like Lanzini and having the bench we do have, which is which is decent. Our bench is actually pretty good, like lacking a striker, but it's not that bad. Bringing on someone like Lanzini for I don't for Suchek, which or something like that, where bring basically bringing him on in a deeper role where he can affect the game and like be able to wriggle out of that high press when he does receive the ball to his feet, be able to sort of turn and do something might be better. I mean, like I thought about changing to a five at the back for a while, but I just like, I had to be honest with you, I do like this, this four, two, three, one. And I sort of don't want to see us drop it instantaneously. And I think having more attacking people on the pitch is a better idea than uh, taking someone off to be a defender to try and switch that up. And as much as it might be useful to see, say, Masuaku, well, I don't even know if Masuaku's on the bench, I can't remember, but just say Cress one, Kufal for the sake of argument, getting further forward, and that would be great and all. I do think the 43 is the way to go. I think it's probably maybe a, a change in the, the double pivot. Yeah, again. I think the big difference between Leeds and Brentford is at half time as we are, I think Leeds had one standout player in Rafina. That was their standout player. I think I think Dan yeah. James is pretty average. He got subbed against us at half time for Harrison. I think yeah. uh, Click was pretty average, but Rafina was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Rico's caused us problems up front, but it was all Rafina. It was almost like stop Rafina, you stop Leeds. That's not the case with Brentford. I think Rico Henry is fantastic coming down the left. I think Canos is playing really well down the right. I think mm -hmm. we can't handle Tony up front. And Bueno's the perfect partner for him. One's big and wins everything. He's quite creative. The other one's a bit smaller and a bit quicker. Um, mm -hmm. They've almost got three different threats coming on there against us. And then in the middle of the park, they're perhaps not providing threats. You know, um, Onyeka, Baptista's gone off, but Onyeka, Norgard, and the other guy that came on, Jorgensen, um, they're not really providing much threat, but they don't need to. They don't need to cause us problems. Canos is doing it, Henry's doing it, the two strikers are doing it. All they have to do is stay organised, compact the pitch a little bit, and work hard and try and stop Ben Rama shooting from 25 yards out kind of thing. I'm nervous for this one, actually, Charlie. Um, I don't. Th I think they're going to score again. I think we're going to need to score two to get a draw out of this. And it's not just because I said 2-2 two -two is a prediction. I, I do worry. I think there's another goal in this Brentford mm. team. And I actually think Ivan Tony's actually been quite quiet from what I've seen him so far this season. I think Tony's actually had a quiet game. Um, and even then, he's got, he managed to get Zuma on a yellow... He's been battling back at the back quite well. Him and Zuma are having a battle. I mean, look, if you're in, if there are some neutrals in the chat as well, they're probably having a grand old time today because it's actually quite a good match, end to end stuff, and you know. But I, I think the thing is, is, I think you look at it and you say, we do have a decent bench with some people who can change stuff up. And again, you're looking at as much as people don't want to say the words Andre Armalenko is all right. Andre Armalenko is all right. And he can hit them from range. And if we are struggling to get in and around their box because they can just afford to sit back, it wouldn't surprise me if we see him come on towards the end of the game, mainly just to take accurate shots from range, which is something we don't tend to do. I mean, and there were a couple of times in that half where slightly more composure in the, in the final third, a slightly better pass here, uh, a slightly different decision there, and all of a sudden we might get a goal. So I don't think it's there isn't there is an opportunity there to get at them. Um, it's difficult. It's significantly more difficult. It's probably the biggest challenge we've had this year in some to some extent, to be honest with you. Um, but I still have faith in the team and I still have faith in uh, in the actual players that we have on the bench as well. It's just a case of, can we make it happen? Yeah, but um, anyways, second half started. I'll tell you what, we're on attack here. Um, no, good tackle. I'm going to disappear and watch this game, Mr. Walsh, and I shall pop back at full time, but enjoy the second half. Cool, enjoy the second half. Um... Gio Mackey, ladies and gentlemen, he will be back at full time for the review with Gonzo, as previously mentioned. The second half will be getting underway in just a moment for me. I'm currently in the ads, as you know, I'm behind because, uh, you know, it's not live on Sky or BT, so I can't watch it. Um, at least I don't think it is. Let me double check one more time. Because as far as I'm aware, it's not. Let me double check Sky just quickly. I know it's not on BT. Let me double check Sky quickly. Um, but yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. We see how it goes. We see how it goes. If you're here for just for the halftime talk, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. Remember, we are live every single match day with a watch along right here on Hammers Chat. I'm here from the half an hour before kickoff all the way till full time. And then Gio and Gonzo take over for their live review at full time. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Enjoy the second half. Hopefully, 
where we'll have something big to talk about. The teams are coming out here on my screen for me. I will, of course, uh, hit the uh, timer when the time is right. I've just noticed that time is a little bit cut off. Let me try to do that. Try to finesse that just a little bit. Um, I don't disagree with Gio when he says he thinks they might score another one. I think there's definitely an opportunity here for Brentford. Um, they're in a driving position. They can sit back a little bit deeper. They can, they can uh, move around. It'll be interesting to see. Hey, like the video, we've got we're, we've got big numbers in here today, and we could get dangerously close to beating our record of last week, which was four two two likes. We're on two hundred nineteen already, so we're we're over halfway there. Half the game down, we're over halfway there. It's possible. Thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Like I said, the second half is about to kick off for me. My stream has glitched right at the second of kickoff. I suspect when I click play again, it will have kicked off. It has. It's over a minute into the game. Excellent. <laughs> We've kicked off at the London Stadium. It's Brentford 1, West Ham United 0. Can we work our way back into this game? I like to have the belief that we can. We will see. This is a big challenge for both the team and David Moyes. We will see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. I've, I've come back with more water, but also a cup of tea. Hopefully the tea will help here. It's not an orange, but, uh, you know. It is slightly orange in color, I guess. It's not really, is it's more like a beigey brown. But the point is, hopefully that'll help. Hopefully that'll help. Come on. Right, here we go. Here we bloody go. Starting to have big boy rain now at the London Stadium. People in the front row who, of course, should be covered by the the amazing roof that we have isn't and never will be. But, you know, it is what it is. Will that help or will that, will that cause issues for West Ham United? I'll tell you what I could have instead of an orange. I could have a banana. I've got bananas. I've got bananas. Let's, let's, let's try a banana. You know, let's experiment. You know what I mean? See what happens. We'll see what happens. Because the oranges, if you don't know, John, uh, John, Mr. Pardew, good to see you. If you don't know, uh, I've been told by my doctor I need to lay off of them, so I can't. Uh, so I don't. I just don't have any. I have orange juice, but I don't have any orange juice because the fuel shortages mean that the last two groceries we were supposed to get just didn't turn up. So, ugh. so we don't have any oranges, orange juice. So let's try this banana, see if that helps. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Free kick to West Ham in a very good position here. Free kick to West Ham in a very, very good position here. Um, Mikel Antonio backing up against the defender from the through ball from Saeed Ben Rama, looking good. Just pulled down. And this is the kind of position where you can cause damage from. This is 100% the kind of position where you can cause damage from. And I'm excited to see. So let's see, let me put that on. Three kick, about 25 yards from goal. Rice standing over it. Cresswell. Ben Rama. I'd be shocked if it wasn't Ben Rama who hits it, but at the same time, we do tend to lay it short in these positions for Declan Rice to hit it wide for some reason, and I don't know why. Mr. Zero Waste, bro. Mr. Zero Waste, exactly. But I don't eat the skin because that's madness. <laughs> madness. Really? Did send me some? I did not know that. I did not know that. Love a banana. I know. Oh, Ben Rama. Sorry. Oh, hang on. Ben Rama free kick just over the bar there. It was a good hit. He's trying to look for that sort of top left hand corner. It doesn't quite get enough whip and dip on it to get there. But tipped over from Raya, and it's a free kick. They are fruit. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Of course they're fruit. Of course they're fruit. Corner to West Ham. Out on the left-hand side. Cresswell takes it. Puts it in deep. That's better. Zuma was attacking. Couldn't quite get there. Foul on, I think, Pontus Janssen. Foul on Pontus Janssen. It's a free kick to Brentford. We'll see if that, we'll see if that helps. We'll see if that banana helps. You know, I'm 
West Ham pressing here, just forcing Brentford into slightly panicked passing, but not pressing as much as a unit as we usually do, allowing them to sort of play the ball out. Sort of play the ball out here. The thing is, as John's saying, Brentford time wasting is so annoying. But the thing is with the time wasting, right? The thing is with the time wasting is that what it what it can mean is that they're going to have a lot of time where they're just trying to waste waste. They're, they're going to try and want to waste time in around their own area, right? When they've got the ball, when the goalkeeper has the ball, Raya, when the centre backs have the ball, they're going to want to take their time to sort of move it through the lines to an extent. They're not going to want to try and hit it forward in a, in a very fast fashion. But that, as much as that seems like it's going to be annoying for us, that's actually kind of beneficial to us. Because to be honest with you, what that will mean is that we're able to press them maybe a little bit more effectively. Just getting those people in and around the area, getting our forwards in and around their defence, just trying to ask questions, trying to force them into making dodgy passes. Now, as I said in the first half, they're not bad at the dodgy pass game, okay? Because you've got Ivan Tony, you've got Mbwemo up front. These are people who can do big things if you need them. These are people who can get on those balls, win the second ball, sprint through into open spaces. It's not as it's not as effective against Brentford to just punt it long uh, for Brentford. Sorry, it's not as effective for... It's not as effective to stop Brentford by letting them punt it long because they have people who can pick it up at the other end. However, if they are going to time waste with the goalkeeper, with the centre-backs and whatnot, that will allow us to just try and force those issues a bit more. And to be honest with you, you're seeing Ivan Tony drop deeper and deeper to get involved in the game. And when we're staying very far forward, but that kind of stuff can only help us. Can only help us. As long as Zuma, Ogbonna are on point in their game, as long as Rice and Suchek are on point in their game, then that means we'll be able to sort of deal with that a little bit, I think. So we'll see how it ends up playing out. We'll see how it ends up playing out, but they aren't committing anywhere near in the way they were. Although here they've got, they've got more people committing into this more than they probably would. Foul from Norgard against Crestwell, but we'll see. Bananas not fruitless. I'm still, I'm saying, who's what's this bananas are not a fruit nonsense going on? Is a banana not a fruit? Is that something I mean, is, is it? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I not eating one of my five a day? What's happening here? What is it if it's not a fruit? What for the sack the manager have they flipping now? Those people, yeah, they have zero chill, do Watford. <laughs> I mean, Watford, I would have thought we're going straight back down anyway. But, like, my God, they have zero chill. What's going on there? What is going on there? For Ranieri as well. It's just they're, they're a wild team, ain't they? Speaking of wild, a wild arm there from uh, Sergio Canos against Pablo Fernandes results in a West Ham free kick. One limb. One limb. West Ham working their way through the lines really well. Mikel Antonio's here. It's just couldn't quite get enough time to get a shot away. Dinks it back across. It's not great. Suchek tries to attack it. Can't. Bowen. Uh, what's the, I don't get what the point was. See, but the thing is, is I think I think Pringles are crisp, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Does that mean yes? Does that mean no? I don't know. Bananas herb. What? What? But also herb. I don't, know, I don't know about this. 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 This is something we're going to have to go to the Wikipedia on soon just to test to figure out what the answer is. Suchek hooks it forward, trying to find Mikel Antonio. Can't quite. Rico Henry's having a good game defensively, to be fair to him. Um, I was never someone who I I've never been a huge fan of Rico Henry's defensively. I've liked Rico Henry as a footballer a lot, but I've always felt like his defending was always his susceptible area in his game. But he's doing well here today. He's doing very well here today. Um significantly. <laughs> significantly more than I thought they would, especially when you compare it to Kufal, who's the opposite number today. Ogbonna with a wild header. Thankfully, Cresswell mops up after him and doesn't allow Brentford a, an easier opportunity than they would have otherwise. West Ham punting it forward. It's worked out here. Ben Rama just outside the area tries to play through Jared Bowen. He's here. He's hit it. <gasps> Raya does well there. Comes out 
flipping blocks it like that. You know, good defending gets himself big, big. But that's better. We got the ball forward there, and you saw Antonio Ben Rama, Bowen, and Fornell was all very close to each other. So when we did get the ball forward, Antonio wins the first ball, and instantly we have people in there to win the second. It wasn't a case of Antonio looking super isolated. That's something we have been good at. He's not been anywhere near as isolated this season as he has in previous. Corner comes in, header over, but it's working a little bit. It's working um, in that sense. And we we need to be a little bit more open to that, I think. We need to be a little bit more open to that. Bananas related to ginger has a tree stem instead of a wood one. So this means... Wait, I saw someone else say something about this. Where is it? Bananas botanically is a droop which grows from a herb plant related to ginger. So it's a herb. Banana is technically a berry. It grows on a herb. It's not a tree as there is no wood. Wait, so banana trees don't have wood? I remember that bit in Georgian Jungle where he bounces off it like ropes in wrestling, but I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, ben Rama getting forward, hits it from range. Can't quite find a way through all of those people. A lot of people. A lot of people in and around the, uh, the area there for Brentford. But West Ham are getting increasing chances here. The question now becomes, can West Ham break Brentford down while maintaining a sort of sensible defensive, while maintaining a sort of sensible defensive presence that wouldn't allow Brentford to counterattack into it too rapidly? Can West Ham break down Brentford? I believe they can. There, there is space to be got at. There's, there's stuff to be found. They aren't the best team defensively. We can do this. We have the players to do this. We've seen us do this this season, but we just need to force it. Referee calls a free kick there against, I think, Mikel Antonio on Rea. It's played in by Kufal. Rea catches the ball, bunces into Mikel Antonio, and the referee calls a free kick. To be honest, everyone's booing and everything else, right? It's not like West Ham were about to get an opportunity from it. The ball was already going out for a goal kick, so it really, or, or a corner, I guess. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. I get it. We don't get a corner, but, you know. This is a pro orange chat. Yeah, I, I know. I get it. I do understand. I wish I had an orange. Look, 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 look. I wish. I wish I had an orange. I do. I wish I had orange juice. The orange juice was working. I wish I had orange juice. Not as effective as the orange itself, but I wish I did have orange juice. But blame Boris, bruv. He's the one who's caused this flipping <laughs> fuel shortage, which has not allowed me to have the orange juice I so crave. Okay, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the way I feel. You want to have any strong opinions on great? I do have a lot of them. F thing number one, green are better. Oh, Kufal plays it in head wide, just wide from Bowen. It's a good opportunity. Doesn't quite work. Doesn't quite work. A very good opportunity. One green is better than red. Red are not bad, but they have to be seedless. If you've got seeds in your graves, they're trash. They're, they're, they're trash. I have very strong opinions on him. It's a good opportunity from West Ham. Worked down well. Kufal, who's getting a little bit more into the game here in this second half. Battling with Pinnock. Does well. Get He's basically on the edge of the area. Dinks it in towards Bowen, who gets his head to it. It's a good header as well, but it's going wide. Raya looks good. I tell you what, Raya is not a bad goalkeeper. Raya's looked very good. So, pardon me. Raya has looked very good so far today. I respect it. I don't... Uh, Mr. Pardew, I would if I could. I don't have an orange. There's no oranges. There's not an orange in this house. Not even in the bin, there's no oranges. There's not even orange juice. Orangeless. This is an orangeless household. If I'd be on it. Bowen, very close there. It was, to be fair, it was a decent header from him. Just not quite on target, but Rhea looked like he was confident and had it covered the entire time. Rhea looks very, very assured. Um, I do like Rhea a lot, to be fair, though. Rice plays out to four nows. Again, West Ham having all of... The uh, I think all of the possession here it's really working for them right now. It's really working for them. Um, it's, we're starting to create more and more chances, we're starting to find more and more space. Um, but it just it just it hasn't worked. It's just not, it's just we're not, it's not happened yet. But the signs are looking more promising than they did in the first half. Brentford are looking very happy to sit back and defend. They've got a lot of people behind the ball. They're looking to really just hold hold it strong. 
hold it strong. They don't want to step out of place too much. And whenever West Ham do get towards the final third, they defend very quickly. Mick Anatoly getting through there. He's on the left-hand side, tries to play it across. Ben Rama. Oh, it wasn't Ben Rama, it was four nails, I think. Hit it. Oh, I thought that was in. From Kufa. I thought that was in for a second. Antonio again finding some space and some success here. Again, this is always this game is here for West Ham to take if we can. He battles his way through. He plays the ball across the four nails. He hits it. It's a good block by Rico Henry. Then Kufal at the far post picks up the ball, hits it. It's wide. Oh, it wasn't even wide. It was a save. It's a corner to West Ham. A corner played in. Raya punches it away. Throw into West Ham now on the opposite side, on the left-hand side. Very, very deep into Brentford territory. Some excellent shithousery from the, from the Brentford uh, substitute bench to throw the ball away from Pablo Fornals there. I respected it. I thought it was quite funny, if I'm being quite honest. Uh, Cresswell throws it short. Ben Rama's there. Being held on. Can't, wiggles his way through. Played in. Antonio headers it, but no one can quite get there. So he fouled on the far post. Hits it. It's blocked again. Lance Bonner, who tries a audacious shot, um, blocks and West Ham still have possession of the ball. Brentford, all men back. 63 minutes on the clock. This is all West Ham right now. This is all West Ham. This, If we can carry this on, this is really good from us. This is really, really good from us. Cresswell, lost the ball towards, headed, all, headed over from Mikel Antonio. Headed over from Mick Antonio. Just met how am I watching it in the link in the description below. Discord, click that. There's a bit called stream links. There's a link in there which will help you. Free to join, completely free to join. Lovely people there, but yeah. Um, there's options, is what I'm saying. Ryer is having a very good game, isn't he? He's having a very good game. Brentford are like a bloody fence, then we'll bring it down. Get your hammer and your chisel. That's not how you take down fences, but straw, let's go at it. Just start going, you know? Black and Decker, like Mourinho said that one time, Valadice, you know? 17th century football. Let's go. Let's get him. Let's get him. Come on. Come on. I don't actually think I don't actually think Brentford are playing 17th century football. You just understand where I'm going with it. West Ham winning another throw. I tell you what, this is all West Ham right now. This is all West Ham. I mean, I just saw, I'm, I'm just looking at the possession here. I mean, West Ham currently, this is in the second half, 75% possession in the second half from West Ham. This is how much it's all West Ham right now. Steaming forward, trying to make stuff happen. Henry on the left-hand side, whips it in. Block from Zuma. So good ball down the left from good down ball down the left from Brentford. It's an, an opportunity they haven't really had too much of. Um, and Zoom is just there, completely holding his arms back, blocking it. Ends up being a free kick in the end anyway, but not bad from West Ham defending wise. And, and an interesting opportunity from Brentford, trying to sort of maybe get a little bit of a grip on this game because right now it is all West Ham and they're allowing it to be all West Ham, but it is all West Ham. <laughs> Sorry, I know people don't like it when opposition players shithouse you, but to be honest, I find it quite funny. Uh, and Ivan Tony there, just very subtle shithousery, and I, I appreciate it. Bemo out on the left hand side, looking to try and make something happen, tries to dink it across to Tony in the area who's battling, he's holding it off. 
Brentford passing the ball around. Canos trying to get the ball past Von Els, who just won't let him pass. Brentford forced back. Bowen straight in, strong. Brentford continue with the ball. Free kick, it's corner. Throw into West Ham. We're doing really well here. We're doing much, much better. We're fighting for this. There is a lot of fight for this. David Moyes. <laughs> David Moyes having a Barney right now. Gio made a point at halftime about this referee almost losing control of his game. And to be honest with you, it feels it. It does feel it right now. Found a chocolate orange in the cupboard. Come on. Yes, John. Love to see it. I would get, listen, I would get involved if I could. I would get involved if I could. It's a lovely thing, Stevie C. It's a lovely thing. You know what I mean? Just the fact that there's a link in the Discord and the streaming section that you can just watch it every single game. And it's currently there if people are wondering. You know? It's a lovely thing. Rice in the central circle, in the center circle, the central circle. What is that? In the center circle, West Ham trying to play through the lines. Ben Rama and Fournell's linking up well. Free kick again for West Ham. I tell you what, Brentford are trying. Brentford want to, they want to fight for this win. Uh, and they are going full. They are going full force for it. It's a yellow card here for uh, Norgod. I believe it's Norgod. Yeah, yellow card for Norgod there. Good link up play between Fornals and Ben Rama there. <laughs> Norgod just pulling him back. Yeah, look, Brentford want to fight for this. They really, really want to fight for this. And I kind of respect him for it. I kind of respect him for it. Torres, I agree. We are relentless right now. We are pushing for him. We are, we, are, we are going for it right now. Brentford holding on strong and well, to be fair to them. They're holding on well. I don't want to sit here and act like they're not. They're doing well to hold on to this, but they are in full scrap mode. Free kick about 30 yards or so from goal, maybe 25, 30 yards. Ben Rama standing over it. Cresswell standing over it. Cresswell dinks it instead. A, a pointless use, but whatever, we move. Rice can't quite keep the ball on, and it's a throw into Brentford on the far left-hand side. Kind of a waste of a free kick in an okay position. You'd maybe argue it was too central to be that far away. Um, if you're not going to be able to shoot from there, you want to try and cross it, and in that case, it's a bit too central for that kind of thing. So I understand why we chose to go with the way we did, but it just ends up being a bit pointless. And we're in the 70th minute here. 70th minute, West Ham fighting. Well, Brentford scrapping, West Ham fighting for this. They want it. it. Step up in the second half has been large, but then don't get me wrong, a lot of that is Brentford are allowing it. Brentford are allowing us to have the possession of the ball. They're allowing us. We're sitting deep, they're sitting deep, and they're sort of just watching it happen. Flipping hell, Fabianski has to come out and head the ball away from Ivan Tony there. My God, my God. Another free kick for West Ham. The fouls are racking up. And it wouldn't surprise me if the yellow cards begin racking up <laughs> quite quickly after. Dangerous, awkward ball for Fabianski to deal with. But he does well with the header, to be fair. Don't get me wrong. Brentford are allowing this. Brentford are the team who are sitting back. They're allowing us to have all the possession. They're allowing us to just try and play through the lines. I'm going, yeah, okay, come on to us. We're very confident we can hold you back. So I'm not going to sit here and saying it's because West Ham have been so unbelievably good in this second half that what's happening is happening right now. There's that amount of possession, all that good stuff. However, we are better. We are playing through the lines better. A lot more people... Linking up better, you're seeing that uh, the Pablo Fornells Ben Rama thing very briefly uh, just a couple of minutes ago. Looking good, we're fighting for this, but Brentford are equally they they want to battle, they want to scrap here, um, and they're they're quite happy to have that scrap. And right now, you can make the argument they're winning to an extent. There's a lot of fouls going for West Ham. The yellow cards are beginning to start coming out in quite frequently. We'll see how it develops. You will say that Brentford are 
allowing this to happen. It's not West Ham are being unreal, but there's a lot more signs that West Ham can do something here. But this is a really good opportunity for Brentford. Dragged wide from uh, Jansen. From Jensen, uh, the central midfielder, who makes a great run, to be fair. And a nice, lovely pass from Tony, who's been very good today. His pass has been very good today as well. Um, and Bremer lays it short to Tony, who finds Jensen, who's made his run through. And it was a, it was a shot. It was on target, but it hits off the feet, I think, of Kurt Zuma or Angelo Bonner, one or two. I think it was Kurt Zuma. One of our centre-backs. It was in the centre-back position. Um, and it's a corner now for Brentford. Out on the left-hand side, Jensen to take it. Brentford getting all their boys forward, but West Ham have significantly more numbers in there. Lofted towards the back post. Fabianski collects. Play it quickly now. Play it quickly. Play it quickly. Tony's trying his hardest to stop it. It was try to punt towards Jared Bowen. Again, we're looking to try and utilise those spaces, but we just couldn't quite find it there. Brentford forced all the way back to Raya. And a poor touch from Canos allows it to be a West Ham throw-in. On left-hand side, about at the halfway line. This is good. This is good. This is better. <clears throat> We're giving ourselves a good opportunity here. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I like Tony a lot. I like Tony a lot. He's working really hard today. You're seeing his passing as well as everything else he does. He's he's a good player. He's a good player. And like Gia said earlier when he was talking about, he has some doubts about whether or not he was going to make it in the Premier League and whatever. If there are any doubts, he's very, very quickly showing them up. Um, he's doing very, very good. Doing such a prick. I respect it. I respect it as well. I do like a prickish footballer. I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you. I do. You know? Just got to respect it. <clears throat> Just got to respect it. So, 16 minutes... 16 and a half minutes plus stoppage time to go. Brentford holding on to this 1-0 lead for their life right now. For their life right now. And they're doing it pretty well. Zuma plays out to Kefal on the left hand on the right hand side. West Ham on about the halfway line here, trying to find any options. West Ham just trying to, again, build up here. They've got enough numbers forward, but Brentford are back in, back in huge numbers. Cresswell's crossed there way, way too deep. Uh, and it just goes out for a goal kick. But um, West Ham are getting numbers forward, but Brentford have so many people back that it's going to take a bit, something something a little bit special. Something a little bit special to, to, to break down this team here. They're sort of... They're sort of, it's not that it's not there. You know, for now, Ben Rama, they've linked up quite well. Bowen's looked much of a muchness today. Antonio's grown into this second half a lot. We've got the people there to make it happen. We've got the people there to make it happen. But equally, equally, we're at a stage where, you know what? If It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of you were saying you were scared Brentford were going to nick a second goal here. It would not surprise me, and I would understand it. But Antonio making space down out wide again does well. Plays it back to Sufal, tries to whip it in with his left foot. Bowen goes down again, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> oh, Suchek, who went down, I'm just like, no, it's not. Doesn't look like a pen to me. It just looks like someone going down. I see the replay again here. Yeah, not a pen. Not a pen. Yvette, it's right there, my friend. It's right there. It's currently West Ham nil, Brentford 1. Less than 15 minutes to go, although, you know, plus stoppage time. Difficult game. Difficult game for West Ham. This is showing, this is when, this is, you separate the men from the boys. You know, can we do this? This is a big, big challenge for us. Probably the biggest challenge we've had so far this season. Brentford are incredibly resilient right now. Sitting deep, stopping everything we do. We need to come up with a, we, they're asking us questions. The question being, can you break us down? And the answer so far is a resounding no. A resounding no. 
substitutions maybe on the horizon, you feel like? I think that's vodka. Listen, Todd, I don't drink alcohol, so it's just water. But I tell you what, imagine if it was just downing a pint of vodka, no messing, no remorse. You know what I mean? No subs made yet, Tom. No subs made yet. Always won't do crap. I mean, yeah, we'll see a hundred. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see, Smeet. We'll see. But you feel like we're getting closer and closer to the time where you sort of almost forced to do it. Because to be honest, the answer to the question is, can we break Brentford down right now is no. And if the answer is no, and we've given them, what, 30 minutes at this point in this second half, maybe now's the time. Who would you do, though? That's the problem. Who would you even take off? I mean, doing a like for like doesn't seem to make much sense. So maybe you're saying taking off Suchek for, say, Lanzini or something. Um, you know, maybe a Yarmolenko for Bowen, something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But I feel like I feel like we're getting closer to a time where you almost have to be forced into making a substitution because Brentford are holding out so well here. They had a corner and they almost all got back instantaneously. And Jansen's so big, isn't he? <laughs> He's such a big guy. Cresswell standing on the ball, looking for something. Looking for anything. Oh. <sighs> Ugh. Don't know how I feel about this. Don't know how I feel about this. Don't know how I feel about this at all. Ben Rama, Cresswell can't be found. Can't be found. It's time is ticking down here, and Brentford's defence has been brilliant. Ben Rama picks up the ball. Him and Suchek tackles. Tackle. Suchek makes the tackle. Ben Rama picks it up. It's spread out wide to Kufal, who tries to play in early. Antonio's head there doesn't quite make it work. Cresswell, short to Rice. He runs straight into a dead end. Thankfully, Fonals fishes it out. Cresswell crossed the flex. It's a corner. It's a corner for West Ham on the left-hand side. Aaron Cresswell to take. Ten minutes plus stoppage time to go. I just, I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like we should be making a substitution maybe to just try and break them down. We've got the boys for corners, to be fair. We've got the boys for corners. Cresswell to take it. Left-hand side. Suchek's in there. Zuma, Ogbonna. Played in. Declan Rice heads it on. Bowen hits it. It's in! Bowen scores. It's 1-1. One, one. The wall has been broken. My... Oh, my heart. My heart. My orangeless heart. Can't take it. West Ham United 1. Brentford 1. Back in it. Back at it again with the white bands. It's a corner from Aaron Cresswell on the left-hand side. Headed on by Rice. Suchek was there. It comes out to Bowen, who's just sort of hanging around on the edge of the area, just on the edge of the D. Hits it first time with his weak foot right into that bottom corner. Good finish, Jarrah Bowen. Come on, Glenn. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Bear Rama. Jared Bowen. Mikel Antonio. Please, can you score us a goal? I keep forgetting it, Titch. Now we go for the jugular. That's it, Torres. Now we go for it. Look, we've got one back here. Brentford have been incredibly resilient in this second half. It has been practically all West Ham, as much West Ham as it was possible to be. Brentford have held out. They've stood firm, defending non-stop. And it's a corner that has undone them. A hit from Jared Bowen with his weak foot into that bottom right-hand corner. To be fair to him, to be fair to him, I didn't know he had it in him. But it is West Ham United 1, Brentford 1. 10 minutes plus stoppage time to go. 9 minutes plus stoppage time to go. Brentford making two substitutions. West Ham, West Ham yet to make any. Will that change their approach, Brentford? Wiss is coming on for Mbemo. Um, Onyeka has also come off for 
Uh, who was it? Who is it? Uh, for bid drop. West, of course, scored against, I think it was Liverpool. Um, dangerous, dangerous player. Brentford now maybe... Listen, a 1-1 draw for Brentford away at West Ham is not the worst thing in the world at this point. It's not the worst thing in the world. But you look at it and you're saying, will they come back out? Because they must feel like Brentford, if they get a goal here and then go back into that defensive shape they were just playing with, then a win could be on the cards. So would they be tempted to step out of their shell and go for the win here? West Ham are going to be pushing for it. West Ham want it. West Ham have been in this all of this second half. It's just been practically all West Ham. At one point, it was 75% possession for West Ham. Let's see how it goes now. Brentford have got a couple more people forward. They've got a free kick in a decent position to try and at least start building something here. At least start building an attack here. Let's see how it goes. Taking as long as they can with this free kick. Put into a decent area. Headed away from Thomas Suchek. Pinnock headers it straight into the hands of Fabianski. Play it quickly. Would be nice. Quick play. Norgard was just standing on Fabianski, stopping him from playing it quickly. Fair play. I mean, look, they're using the dark arts here to an extent, Brentford, but they're using them very effectively. Um, and not allowing West Ham to, to, to go quickly. Foul on Pablo Fornals. Yellow card comes out once again. Lots of Brentford players just racking up cards here. Racking up cards. That time, Sergi Canos is the one who's getting it. Remember, like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're around here. All that good stuff. We are getting dangerously close to the end here with six and a half minutes plus stoppage time to go. We're at 256 likes. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, 442 was the record, which was last week, which was wild. And so uh, to get even remotely that many, which is more than we usually get, is a great help. Thank you so much. Um, as we get closer to the end of this game, Brentford getting a little bit more adventurous, letting one or two more people move a bit more further forward. Tony tries to find Wissa. Good interception from Kurt Zuma, just sniffing it out. Stopping it. Tony just puts pressure on Cresswell, forces him to be at field like we've done. But then Antonio gets the headed ball, ball down from Pablo Fornals on the left-hand side. Janssen comes across and stops him. As I'll say again, every time I see Pontus Janssen, he's a big boy and he, he's a large gentleman. But West Ham throwing on the left-hand side, taking quickly. Aaron Cresswell down the left. Antonio tries to take it round Zanka. Who's claiming it was a dive, but he's picking up a yellow card for his push. I'm now. I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm not saying that he didn't go down. Maybe. Mm. I mean, look. I don't think he went down in the way that he probably would have gone down. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you were pushing him in the face, my G. What were you expecting? <laughs> what were you expecting? Eighty fifth minute. Ben Rama to take the corner. Do, 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 etc., etc. Ben Rama standing over it. Free kick basically in the corner position, basically at the left hand side corner. Takes it short to Cresswell, hits it. It is a corner now. It is a corner for West Ham now. Trying to make this look slightly better while we get a corner. There we go. That'll do. Here we go. Corner. Aaron Cresswell out on the left-hand side. Antonio, Ogbonna, Rice, Zuma, Suchek. All large boys all ready to head this in. Cresswell instead hits the head of Ivan Tony. Out. Big nose on that one. Ben Rama. Rice whips it into a really good position. Head off. A glancing header from Mikhail Antonio just wide of the right-hand post. He couldn't quite get the connection he wanted onto it. It was dinked in back into the area by Aaron, by Aaron, uh, by Declan Rice, who receives the ball short from beside Ben Rama. It's bending towards the goal and just a glancing header from Antonio. Suchek was also there at the far post. 
slightly too close ahead of him, to try, slightly too far ahead of him to get it. Oh, I don't even know if either of them get a touch at the end. Close, close. And again, once more, West Ham pushing, pushing Brentford as hard as they possibly can. It's just not quite happening. Brentford as res resolute as you're going to see aside this season right now. And they still carry an attacking threat. Tony's up there. Wiss is up there. They've still got people in and around the area of West Ham who can cause damage. It, if you said to me there was another goal in this game, I'd believe you. If you said it was West Ham, I'd say that's probably the way he's going. If you said Brentford were the ones to score it, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. It's a throw into West Ham deep. Sorry, it's a throw into Brentford deep in West Ham territory out on the right-hand side. Zanka comes across to take it. They're going for a long throw, it looks like, Brentford here. Zanka's winding up for a big Rory de Lap. Tony's in there. Pinnock's in there. Janssen's in there. Big boys. Looking for Tony. Doesn't quite work. Dinked back across. Looking for Wissa. Can't quite find it. Fabianski lets it go out. It's a, it's a goal kick to West Ham United. My God, this game is coming right down to the end. Game is coming right down to the end. I'll tell you what, you look at Brentford and you have to really respect what they've done here today. They took the lead. Second half, they have been as resolute as you like. They have let West Ham into this game as much as they could. They've given West Ham the possession they needed. But to be honest with you, to be honest with you, like West Ham have been significantly better in this second half. They've stepped up. They've created a lot of chances, but Brentford have had so many people in and around the box defending as strong as they can. They've stopped this from being a, a, a stopped this from being a lead so far, so far. However, it's it waited till late late on in the Leeds game. Will it happen again here? We are a minute plus. We are about a minute and a half plus stoppage time away from the end of this match. It's Brentford one, West Ham United one. Here at the London Stadium, I say here like I'm there. I'm not. I'm not. The dark hearts of Brentford may have earned them a draw so far. Remember, if you're new around here, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. We are live. I am live doing watch alongs every single West Ham match day. We have links in the Discord, our Discord, every single West Ham match day. So make sure to come back. The live chat is what makes this work. If it was just me by myself, it would be crap. So you lot are the thing that makes it work. So thank you very much. Remember to come back if you're new around here. Also, hey, it's the beginning of the month, patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. It's something you could and should look at. Bay, beginning of the month is the more bang for your buck you get charged when you join and at the beginning of the month. So have a gander, patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. Lots of extra content from me, Gio, Gonzo, audio versions by Rebecca. Have a gander. Free kick to West Ham. About on the halfway line, right-hand side of the pitch. We're going to look to just pump this one forward. We're going to look to just pump this one forward. 90th minute. Will there be a last-minute twist and turn in this tail? Brentford deal with the free kick well. It was quite bad from West Ham. It was just floated into sort of nowhere. Floated sort of into nowhere, if I'm being honest. Rice passed there, just leaving a lot to be desired from Sufal. Suchek battles for it. Bowen picks up the ball. Takes on Rico Henry, who's had a very good game, to be, to be fair. Had a very good game. <laughs> Premier League just putting up a real big graphic for no reason. Sufal just about keeps it in. Cleared away from Brentford. I don't disagree with you. I, I wish I had some. I wish I had some. It's just not happening. It's just not happening. <sighs> Two and a half minutes of stoppage time left. Two and a half minutes for either side to find a winner. West Ham included. Raya coming in to help Rice with the cramp there. Two minutes left. I'm not looking at the chat because at this point I know you guys will be finishing the match and I'm two minutes behind or so. So I won't be looking at the chat yet until the match finishes. But what I will ask you is it's time for your man of the match. Let me know who your man of the match was. 
and we will pick the Hammers Chat Chat Man of the Match for the Watch Along. Whoever gets the most votes from what I see in the chat will be the winner. Get those in now. We're about a minute and a half left. A minute and a half left. If this does end 1-1, you have to say Brentford probably deserve it. Better team in the first half and an excellent defensive performance in the second. Excellent defensive performance in the second. They're probably very happy to just see Rice sit down with Cramp for the rest of this game. If I'm being honest, we'll see how it goes. <sighs> Minutes go. Rice still trying to get the Cramp out. And he gets a yellow card for his troubles. It was kind of a wild challenge, to be fair, on Wissa from Black and Rice. A minute left. Maybe plus a little bit more due to the uh, stoppage there. Again, once more, thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Remember, we do watch along live every single match day here. I am live every single match day here. And you are the people who make it in the live chat. Otherwise, it would just be me talking to myself. So I genuinely appreciate you all for coming, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Rice comes back on. 30 minutes, 30 seconds left of allotted time. Will there be extra after? I hope so. Brentford are on the attack. Wissa. Trying for a one-two. It's a free kick in a very, very good area. It's a very, very good area for Brentford. Right at the end here. Right at the death. A free kick. Just outside West Ham's area. Maybe a little bit more to the right than you'd want it to be. But at the same time, range-wise, it's looking good. Wissa on Angelo Ogbonna. Or Ogbonna on Wissa, I should say. Free kick. There won't be much more after this. There won't be much more after this. Jensen standing over it. Brentford has done that little start of free kick twice now. Jensen stands over it, dinks it in. Header at the far post, saved by Fabianski. Hit a second time. Wissa scores. Oh, it's Brentford 2. West Ham United 1. And it's done. It's over now. Ah. They can't act like they sort of don't deserve it. An excellent first half performance from Brentford. An amazing second half defensive performance. Resolute as you like. It might have taken a last minute, last gas free kick, but I can't act like they don't deserve it. Janssen with the initial header from the from the from the uh, free kick. Sfabianski, who has not held onto anything all game, it's felt like, palms it straight back out, and Wissa, who's hanging around just on the edge of the area, strides onto it, strikes it as sweet as you like with your right foot. Into the floor. Bounce. Goal. West Ham United 1. Brentford 2. And like I say, you can't say they don't deserve it. The full-time whistle is gone. And that is over. That is over. Fair play to Brentford. Fair play to Brentford. They 100% deserved it. As much as I as much as I would love to say they didn't, they 100 percent did. Um frustrating, frustrating. Could have been so much better. A couple of chances here and there might have gone our way, it might have happened. But I would like to thank you all for coming. I would like to also invite you all to watch our live match review. The link is in the chat right now. It will be going off in just a moment. Gio and Gonzo will be live discussing the fallout from the game. It's ended here, disappointingly. West Ham United 1, Brentford 2. It hurts. It's difficult. But it is what it is. Brentford, you have to respect it. They were the better team. They do deserve it. The Dark Hearts won, as you say. But to be honest with you, they did very well. They did very well. 
be a lot to talk about in this game and it will all be live in the match review. Have a gander, have a look. Thank you all for joining us. Remember, like the video and subscribe if you're new around here. Remember, I do watch alongs every single match day without fail. I am here from half an hour before kickoff all the way through till full time. Make sure to go and have a gander. Thank you all for joining. Thank you very much. Come on, you eyes. And until next time, have a good one. See you later, everyone. Bye.